This podcast is not safe for work and will feature movie spoilers. It will feature scenes described of a graphic nature. It will contain language which most listeners may find offensive. Welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. Hi everyone and welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. I'm your host Duncan McLeish, welcome to the show and guess what? We're continuing this joyous occasion of summer recordings. Uh, Replacing the summer series this year, something brand new for you. We are doing the Horror Head to Head. The Horror Head to Head is a mad idea that comes out of a Scotsman's brain when he's had a few drinks and he's staring at an Excel spreadsheet saying, I wonder how I can fill it. I wonder how I can fill it with information and details and stuff that means nothing to no one, but makes me infinitely happy. And that's what I am. I'm infinitely happy that we're on episode number four, the penultimate episode of this series. Now, there is an occasion every now and again that you get to sit down and chat to new voices, voices that you've not chatted to, in a long time and just general people that you have a ball with every single time you chat to them this is one such occasion where the stars have aligned and the group that got selected for this one is just i mean i could take the night off right now and just let things run as is you know what nothing would fall over everything would work exactly the way i want i am overjoyed to introduce the host that will be joining me on this fourth episode representing a, a, a list of movies which the, the quality varies in weird and wonderful ways and there's many a story to be told. I'm going to work around the order that the host will appear representing their movies on this episode, which means I start with a, a colleague of mine from the Doing the Nasty podcast. Uh, Mark Ball, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. Uh, I, I'm definitely not uh, representing the worst movie on this list. Uh, that, that definitely didn't happen. Uh, <laughs> uh, and yeah, I'm here representing Doing the Nasty, kind of a sister show over on the, the Teaputs Collective group of shows. Uh, there's a ton of episodes over there. Go go listen to them. We'll, we'll get around to finishing the list here pretty soon. I almost bought one of the movies that's on the last episode of that in the Severin's Got a Sale going on right now. They got a two-pack mm-hmm. of Dr. Butcher MD and Zombie Holocaust. Oh, uh, Dr. Butcher but, MD! But their idea of on sale is still $35 plus shipping. And, uh, well, for a penny of that movie, you buy it. Uh, I might. I got until tomorrow night to decide. But yeah, I've, uh, yeah the, that show will be back here pretty soon. We, I, I've seen a few of the movies that are on the last couple episodes, and uh, uh, yeah, we, we're, we're gonna get to it, <laughs> whether yeah, we mean, fucking like, like it or not. You said that you've been on this episode. You may have been landed with a bad movie. I'm just gonna say, remember you <laughs> on. Maybe I did. Maybe I did. Three years. Three years of season three doing the nasty. That there's no such thing as a bad movie on this episode. <laughs> They're all bad movies. Fuck movies. <laughs> um, it is great to have you here. Now, uh, joining me as a voice that has been a, like a guest and collaborator on podcasts under the stairs since like 2013. Since way, way, way back in the day. Uh, I like to think we came up together, even though we are <laughs> many, many miles apart. Different, um, different continents, completely different countries. But it is always a pleasure to have the, this guy back on the show. Joining us, um, representing uh, a little movie called The Devils by Ken Russell, is my main man, Dave Z. How are you doing, Dave? I am great. It's been way too long. Duncan, we did come up together, I agree. And... Mm. I think this is probably the longest duration between recordings we've ever had. So I'm, I'm yes. very happy to be here. It's, it's long overdue and, you know, recording with a different group that I haven't recorded with everybody before. So it's, I'm excited. Yeah, it's going to be good. And like, as like, cause summer series didn't happen last year and that's generally our catch up point. We would yeah. have a minimum of three episodes every summer to, to, to shoot the shit, catch up and, and, and talk movies and it's always a ball to do that. Like having that year where that didn't happen last year, 
I, I will be honest, there has been a Dave size hole in my heart, uh, which is now filled with you being on this episode. You are on another episode, which technically, chronologically, we will be putting out before this, but this is our first recording. There so you go. Let's break the balls down. You know we what I mean? We can do that. Um, yes. What show are you representing? Or shows, actually. You're you're uh, a guy of many many voices, many talents. Um, what shows are you representing here? Oh, so I I can pick one show this episode or one show another episode. We're doing a show. Oh, hundred percent. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. Well, I'll I'll go with Exploding Heads this time. That's what I'm representing. Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, my, the one I've been doing the longest. And yeah, that's us. We're in our um. We only have. Well, I'll get to that later. But we have a destination. <laughs> we have a destination now. Before we didn't. So we're stopping at three hundred. So you're st- definitely a hundred percent. Yeah, but that's like a year and a half away. That's quite a while. Yep. So, but still. Yep. No, like I, I like I'm because I said I was stopping at a hundred, Dave, and <laughs> I remember this. <laughs> yeah, and like, what, I, what, 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 like we're over thirteen hundred now, um, which um... means I'm a filthy Scottish liar. Um, and I will never forget. <laughs> Uh, we all are. Also, John, we all, well, when it comes to podcasting, it's very we, we say things that yep. seem like great ideas and they're a year and a half away, and then you blink and you're a year and a half later, and it's kind of weird that you're there and you just get. If I just had more time, I could. And then you realise that you do. <laughs> you're in control of everything. Um, I am. I am uh, very curious to get to the movie that you got selected because. Um, it's, it's fucking bonkers. Oh, Plus, no, Ken no. Russell's other movie on this series thus far was an absolute shit show. Uh, it was one of the worst movies I've seen in a long time. Um, and compared to this, you would not think the same director had did it. So, wow. very curious on that. We'll get to it. Um, I get to introduce a new voice, which makes me happy. I love getting new voices on the show. And it has been a while since we had someone brand new um, appearing here for uh, for a little recording um let's get into it shall we let's not let's not waste time here uh he will be uh, representing grave encounters by the vicious brothers that's right that's their name but their surname is not vicious so it's a pseudonym uh, Dan, Sid and marty vicious uh, uh, is it vicious though is it vicious though are they actually brothers or are they just has hollywood lied to me mark they got different last i look like their fucking biographer Yep, like, <laughs> you, you chimed in, Mark. You chimed in with information, and if you put yourself forward for information, I will hit you up for more. Right? <laughs> I, I don't have time at Wikipedia. Right? I'm an old man. Right? Internet confuses me. Um, Dan's joining us here. Dan, first tell us what show you're representing, uh, and then let's let's chat. Yeah, I am representing the Corrupted Youth Podcast. <laughs> Um, we've been doing it for seven and a half years. Mm -hmm. Um, my co-host is my son. So if you listen from the early episodes to now, you can hear him go from a squeaky little 14 year old to a 21 year old where we're talking about drinking beer and (laughs) he can finally like not be weird about talking about boobs and movies. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Weird experience working backwards. (laughs) <laughs> you know, be like a Benjamin Button podcast where you start with them go like that. You know, see that actress, amazing rack, and then you're like a couple of a couple of months later, he's like that. Yeah, like homework was really hard today, Dad. And you're like, that's <laughs> 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 um, awesome. Check out episode one of a Serbian film. Well, that's a rough one, but let's go. <laughs> Yeah, we don't get we don't we don't we don't get that uh, hardcore with it. So, so um, so in, in terms of what how, how your show formatted out was uh was it to get your son into horror movies and just like, or to get him into movies in general, or was he already kind of that way inclined that it was a case of, here's he, let let me custodian you through the movies you should be watching as opposed to all the ones that possibly aren't worth your time. It actually was a way for um, my wife to get some peace (laughs) because she was sick of third wheeling while we had movie discussions. (laughs) Don't start a podcast. No other wife has ever said that sentence, by the way. Um, (laughs) I'm like, like Dave knows. It's usually the other way around. Another podcast. Oh, amazing. That's awesome. (laughs) 
It was actually suggested by a friend when he was eight, but then my wife was like, "Yeah, so what about that podcast?" Like, <laughs> maybe you guys. There's a like... microphone arrived in the mail. I don't know who ordered that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a lot of fun. And you it's, were it's we a... were we were speaking off air about um, like so you like you've been following the podcast under the stairs for a scary amount of time that I actually feel really guilty that one, I wasn't aware of how long your show had been going and two, you've never actually been on an episode. So I'm going to, I'm going to put me at fault there and uh, hopefully moving forward, we'll rectify that, make sure that you have many more appearances because the internet makes everything easy. So, you know, I just never really like had the gusto. I was always like, "Ah, I don't know. I we'll know see, nothing then... about what I do, Dan. Like I, I literally, <laughs> I fake everything I do. Um, and all you have to do is sound confident and everyone agrees with you. So uh, that's literally how, it's how I operate. It's my, it's my credo. So uh, I look forward to having you more and more on the shows moving forward. Rimmed it out, this square, which isn't rimmed. Um, as a guy who's been on here a few times before. Uh, he was building himself up for summer series, and then we we, we cancelled it. Um, and I had him. I'm going to get him on. I'm going to get him on to do something a bit bigger, so he's not just an adjudicator or marking scores or sending voicemails. Uh, I need to get this guy on to get into the nitty gritty. Um, he's also been very kind in the last couple of years to invite me over um, to chat about franchise horror. I'll be honest, I've, the picks that I've received. Have not been always great, uh, but the, the the fun has been in chatting with them. Uh, joining us right now is my good buddy Cole, who tonight will be representing um, a, a little guy. I don't know if this guy's actually went on to do anything. What's his name? Mike Flahanagan, um, I think is how we pronounce his name. I don't know. I may have made Fla- that up. Flanagan. Fla- 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 um and and a movie that actually I'm really excited to talk about because this is the movie that was in uh, release hell. It was in um, it was in distribution jail, um, but we're going to be doing before I wake. Cole, how are you doing, buddy? Well, Duncan, I'm doing pretty fantastic. Whenever I hop on, it's it's always fun because we enjoy our beverages and um, oh, talking cool. with three other people that I've never chatted with before as well too. So I'm excited to to uh, chat with you guys, and we got another fellow Midwesterner and Dan in. Mm. Uh, two episodes so that's pretty fun yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and i always uh i found something so i always like to whenever i guest on a podcast i always will bring like a a drink or a beer or something that you usually but you usually of, bring a whiskey and hold it up and say is that like i spent this on this duncan is this worth it and i go that's a no that's a good highland park is a good whiskey to drink yep Yep, it's it's Highland it's Park, and and you know Duncan taught me if there's an E in your whiskey, then you're you're kind of trailer trash. Only, so. Yeah, only, yeah. <laughs> but, you know this is spicy and well rounded, just like uh, just like Duncan here, and it's a wild harmony of honey drenched oranges, winter spice fruit cake, and floral peat smoke, which I'll probably taste none of. Uh, and I'm gonna pour myself two fingers, one for each of my favorite holes of uh, Duncan's. And um, dear God Almighty, what we're doing here? I'll let you go. PG yes. podcast, a PG podcast, Cole, a PG podcast. Um, Cole, I'm very excited to have you here on this, um, and we might get sound effects here. Is it is it cork or is it screw top? Screw top. It's not as interesting. Um, it's cork. No, oh, that was a cork. It was a cork. Mm. Um, <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Um, so, gentlemen, this could not be any easier than anything I've put you through before. Trust me. Um, like, if you're a veteran of summer series, like Dave is, for example, or Mark, you'll know that the rules got so far out of control, the movie list got so long, that it almost became impossible to kind of work out what you were doing until the moment we were recording. That is not the case this time. There is only four movies up here, but you're representing a director and a movie on this episode. The format is very simple. We are going to go to each of you and you're going to put forward your case, either for or against, like you may have loved the movie, you might not have liked the movie, and in an almost courtroom style in the in the court of the, the podcast under the stairs, you'll put forward your case. At the end of that five minutes or so, uh, we're going to scrutinise your grades. You've scored it based on five categories and the scoring is one through ten. 
once we have that detail down, you will then be open to cross-examination by the other hosts who will then also reveal how they scored the movie. And then we'll move on. We'll get the next host to represent their movie, etc, etc. At the end, we'll be able to chart out the total scores for each of the movies over all four hosts. Now, I know what you're thinking, dear listener, and this is the first one you're dropping in on. I've not explained it yet. If this is the fourth episode you're dropping in, this is getting tiresome. I have scored all the movies. I've watched them all, I've scored them all, but my scores don't really count. And I'm not really getting involved here. I am chaperoning these lovely gentlemen to their destination. That destination being reviews and scores of movies. However, I will review my scores at the end. And my scores only become important if there is an all-important tie on any of the placements one through four. With all that in mind, ladies and gents, we we have some fun to get to here. So um, let's let's kick off. Let's kick off first uh, with uh, Mark Ball. Mark Ball, um, who landed Wes Craven, was very excited, and then the <laughs> randomizer came round. And my soul to take him up, and he literally just went shit. Um, and I thought I'd seen this one. I hadn't actually seen this one until uh, tonight. So this was a first time watch for me. So uh, well, same I, here. I I've got this confused with another movie that he did um, around the same time. A, a good so, one. Yeah. Uh, it was. It was actually not. I didn't enjoy it as much as Helpful. this one. So yeah. <laughs> 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 I, I was kind of the same way. I, I could have swore I'd seen this. I think I caught part of this back in the day on like HBO or Showtime or something. But this this was a uh, most, mostly first time watch on this one. Excellent. And- so, I like, like, prejudged it as well. You shot this down in flames. Let me, Mark, before you even get into detail, let me give you detail. And then that way you can, you can put forward your... I'm looking forward to this. Mark, I've seen your scores, right? So I'm looking forward, <laughs> looking forward to like a little bit of context here. Uh, so Mark Ball will be discussing uh, My Soul to Take, which came out in 2010. Uh, it was written and directed by Wes Craven. Um, the DP on this one was Petra Corner, uh, who has done loads of TV but not many movies. And the score was done by Marco Beltrami, who has done a shitload of movies, including all the screen movies, uh, one through four. Um, a Quiet Place movies 1 through 2 and Fear Street Trilogy as well as trust me that list goes on and on for big blockbuster thrillers and horrors uh, the cast in this one Max Thoreau uh, John um, <laughs> why did I do this to myself um, Mar- Magro we'll go with that Denzel Whitaker, Zena Gray Nick Lashaway, Emily Mead uh, Jessica Hitt Frank Grillo and other folks a synopsis for this one is a serial killer returns to his hometown to stalk seven children who share the same birthday as the date he was allegedly put to rest. A little bit of trivia here for this one. Um, this movie was not screened for critics. There's usually a reason behind Big that. Big surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the opening scenes and the majority of the third act were actually reshot after negative test screenings, causing the film to be delayed. And lastly, uh, this film is the first film that Wes Craven has both written and directed since A New Nightmare in 1994. Everything worked on after that, there was someone else writing and he was directing. So with all that out of the way, the podcast under the stairs at this moment would like to call one Mr. Mark Ball to take the stand here and put forward his case for or against the movie My Soul to Take. Mark, the floor is now yours. Uh, thank you. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, I take no pleasure in uh, coming, coming up here and trashing a, a movie from a, a great director. Uh, if, if you can imagine for a moment my, my excitement to get uh, a movie by someone like Wes Craven, I'm like, oh, man, is it is it The Hills Have Eyes? Like, Notorious Video Nasty, which I, I adore, is like one of the few movies on that list I adore. Is it a Nightmare on Elm Street, a movie I kind of grew up on and, you know, was a, a, a f- in my formative years, one of my favorites? No, it's fucking my soul to take. Uh, I, I'm shocked this came out in 2010. This feels more like a 2002 kind of fucking movie. Um, this feels like about four or five different movies kind of fucking hodgepodge together. It's a little bit shocker. It's a, more than a little bit scream. It's... Uh, 
mostly it's cheap and bad though kind of like uh th th there might be a few like uh, good ideas kind of hiding under the surface of this thing but like these 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 actors in this movie with the exception of the girl that plays the sister who uh the, I, I must have blinked when they uh explained why her fang? name is fang uh <laughs> oh. i don't know i don't know <laughs> They, they also couldn't decide. Her actual name is either Leah or Leia. They, they, within the scenes, couldn't decide how it's fucking pronounced. So that was a little bit confusing. They also, I don't reveal until like the last, like, you know, a third of this movie that this girl who's like basically our mean girl's bully to the, our, our main character, Bug, was one of the fucking worst character names ever. Uh, the the their brother and sister like it's it's like a big reveal late in the movie which was is th this movie is chock full of nonsense uh like the, the this this scored very low in story in my in my thing because this is just fucking 90 minutes of nonsense kind of uh like there, there's long long scenes of exposition like so sometimes action scenes get held up in the middle of them so a character can exposition dump and uh I'm kind of curious. I had heard that like a good portion of this was reshot mm. after some really bad test test screenings. I, I'm curious, like what the what the fucking point of this whole thing was originally. What the hell does the condor have to do with anything? Uh, why does that kid have a Justin Bieber haircut? I mean, there's a there's a there's a there's a lot going on here, and it's all bad and it's all cheap. Interesting, Mark. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I'm glad that you didn't hold anything back there. Um, let's take a little look at your scores. So five categories here. Uh, we have story, acting, effects, soundtrack, and kills. Um, it's one through ten. <laughs> Dear God Almighty, strapping. Uh, Mark, what did you score the movie for story? I give this. I give this a one. This is just so bare, barely that comprehensible. So harsh, it's, it's, it does. It's, it does seem harsh, but maybe maybe a little bit deserved. This this is the lowest score I gave on either of these two shows to anything in any category. Like this, 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 one, this, this gets a fucking one out of ten, story. folks. One out of ten. One out of ten. So one. Right. I spent maybe a little harsh in the Tubi dumpster. So wow. you know, he watches. He watches. I wasn't video quite that lucky. with me. He watches movies where there is no plot. <laughs> this, right? It's like, yeah, yeah, the, maybe a little okay. harsh. The, the rest of these are not not quite so harsh. I don't know about that, Mark. <laughs> like, what did you? What did you give? What did you give acting? Acting, I gave this a three, which I feel is being a little wow. generous. Frank Frank Grillo is is like one of the only like actor actors in this fucking thing. So what, of course, did they do? They named his character Frank. He's he's Agent Frank, like he is in every Agent other Frank. goddamn movie that he's in. So, <laughs> like and like years. I said, that I kind of like that girl that plays Leah Leah Fang, whatever her name is. She's not bad. She gets a little bit of business to do late in the movie, but like all the rest of these people are just fucking terrible. Just just <laughs> awful. Right, let's talk wow. effects, like because I, I, I get the feeling that things things can only get better. Yep. What did you give uh, effects? This gets a fucking two, man. This is right, like, apparently not. Right, two, right, two right. is two is generous. Yeah, like this is this almost got a one in effects too because he uses that awful early two thousand CGI blood. It's it's a little bit generous with the blood, but man, by like two thousand ten, you could get away with anything in an R rated movie, and this is so fucking tame compared to stuff that oh. came out like five years earlier. Oh man, this is a bit. I mean, I'm not that I'm going to disagree. With what's coming up next? But this does feel like you found a win here. Um, soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> this this got a this got a six for the music. It's, it's, hey, it's what fine. about five? Yeah, this, the music's fine in this, and yeah, the the what's his name Beltrami, Marco Beltrami. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's done he's written, shitloads. Yeah, he's done he's done all kinds of great stuff. Like that was maybe like the one thing I will give this credit for is the music. The music in this is pretty good, and it's very serviceable. And like, if it didn't have that, like this, oh, this would have been so much worse. <laughs> Well, let's let's conclude here on kills, Mark. What did you give the movie for kills? The kills got a fucking two. This is the kills in this are generic and boring as hell. They're all either like a quick little throat slitting type thing, or like a the, the Riverton Ripper runs up and just like stabs you in the gut real quick, you go, blah, and then you fall over and die. Like that's that's all of them. There's like four, uh, uh, the, I think like seven. I don't know, the, the kills in the opening, like. 
Yeah, but it's still kind of the same thing. Like they're they're a little bit more mean spirited, but like uh, it's, it's kind of generic. It just didn't, <laughs> didn't do much for me. You mean spirited, honestly. It's another thing where I might just be my 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 opinion my opinion of it might just be so fucking warped because of some of the insane shit that we've seen over the last four years on doing the nasty that like I, I broke you. Know. Yeah. <laughs> you. I'm happy me. to accept. I, I, I told you before you signed up to do the show that it would break you. Yeah. I'm glad to see the effects are working their way through. <laughs> this means overall collectively, Mark, that out of a possible fifty that you could have given the movie my soul to take you gave this 14 um, which... <laughs> i'm sorry Wes craven i'm sorry <laughs> which feels really low now wow. uh, the, the fairness here comes from passing the torch around where... yeah i want to hear i want to hear the rest of the, the uh, quotes yeah, well, this is where like now the people that we're going to introduce here may want to counter some of the points you said they may actually agree they may actually think you've been too kind. This we'll this movie it. has its fans too, though. I was looking at some of the letterbox mm. stuff, and I was like, "Holy shit!" There's people that are like really into this movie. I feel like I watched a totally different movie. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. Um, let's swing around to Dave first. Dave, uh, you also watched this movie. I, this wasn't a first time viewing for you, was it? No, it wasn't. No. Right. Um, Let's uh, let's talk. Look, retort to Mark. Is there anything that you think he's maybe wildly off on? Anything that you actually totally agree on? Before we get to your scores, wildly off? No. Um, I mean, he's definitely harsh compared. To, you know, but it happens sometimes. He seems harsh compared to my take on it. But I can't defend too much of it. Like, I mean, they are just trying too much with too many things. They just mm. are. Uh, I don't think the plot was bad. I just think they should have stuck more to it and left some other stuff out. It seems like they just tried too hard. Um, I don't. I don't come down on the acting because I just. That's the thing about me, and I'm glad I have this. But I, I usually don't notice bad acting. Uh, maybe like in all the years I've done podcasts, I probably maybe ever said like 10 movies I've reviewed that, that I said there was bad acting in it. Mm. So I usually don't pick up on it. So I'm happy about that. But in the same respect, I can appreciate really good acting. It isn't like, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I know that, you know, the, the acting in Hereditary is different than the acting in Friday the 13th. Okay. hundred um, percent. Yeah. I happen to be a bigger fan of Friday the 13th by a little bit. But, mm -hmm. uh, but when I watch Friday the 13th, I'm never sitting there saying like the acting in there. I don't think there's any difference from the acting in this movie we're talking about mm -hmm. and tons of other horror movies. So, you know, I, I think our scores there are a lot different, but no, I, I understand why, you know, why Mark hates it so much. I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm not a fan. I think it's a missed opportunity is what I think it is. I think it could have been, you know, they were there. I just, he was just trying too hard. I think, I, I don't yeah. know why, but he was, but at the end of the day, I call this movie my hole to take. So there's a reason for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd agree with all that. And, and yeah, like I, I, I feel bad ripping on the acting in this because I imagine these are all pretty inexperienced actors. A lot of them have went on to other things. So, you know, Soap operas? Yeah. <laughs> no, some of them have been in other movies, Mark. How dare you? So I know. I'm, I'm, I'm being super mean, but... The one kill was good with the girl. Not good, but there was an effect on it where uh, the blonde girl in the woods and he hung on her for a little bit and the blood came down and dripped. It was shot in a way that was, I don't want to say artsy, but, you know, better than just, uh, believe me, no one watches more slashers than me. I see <laughs> yeah. I see freaking thing where a guy, you can't even see the weapon and somebody get and they, and they fall on the, on the ground. There's a little bit of blood. You saw nothing. To me, that, yeah. that would be like a one or two in kills. So it's, I think they were a little <laughs> bit better, you know? <laughs> Let's, well, let's you you mentioned scores. Let's get to your scores in comparison to Mark's scores. Uh, Dave, what did you give story? I, I gave it a six. You gave it a six. That's five above what Mark gave it. <laughs> what did you give acting? Okay, well, you guys heard what I just said about acting, so yep. I, I gave it a seven. It, it's fine. It, it's good and just good. Yeah. Yep, that, that's four above Mark effects. I gave a five. They were okay. Some were better than others. Nothing special. That's three above Mark. Soundtrack? Soundtrack, I gave a five. It was fine for the time. Yeah, I love... I love you went lower than Mark on that. <laughs> <laughs> Mark's like, I'm going to give this movie a bone here. I'm going to give it a six. And yeah. Dave's like, no. Um, I'm just looking across here. There might be a theme here, by the way, on that. Um, on the kills, what did you give it? Uh, four. Nothing four. special. Yeah. Yeah. 
Which means that of a total of 50 that this movie could have got from you, you gave it a 27. Not which bad. seems to me wholly reasonable and not Mark Mean. Um, <laughs> That's a little more reasonable. Mean Mark. There he is. <laughs> mean Mark. Mean Mark strikes. Um, right. Uh, thank you very much, Dave. Uh, let's move on to the next uh, the next host that could uh, maybe comment in here, although look at his scores. Uh, this could be fun. Uh, Dan, you also... <laughs> was this the first time viewing or had you seen this one before? No, this is this is a first time viewing for me. All right. <laughs> right, so we're getting that this is fresh from the teat, um, the milky teat of watching this movie. Um, anything that you want to pick up from what Mark has said or anything that you disagree with, what to double down on? Um, uh, I, you know, in my heart, I probably wanted to be as mean as Mark <laughs> with <Wow>. my scoring. <laughs> I really did, because I wasn't sure what to expect from this. So I just tried to play it Midwest nice, I guess. <laughs> Midwest nice. Love it. Love it. <laughs> but um, I, I guess um, for me, this just felt like really out of touch Wes Craven, mm. who he it's just like a lukewarm rehash of some of his earlier concepts. And he's just trying to stay relevant, but it feels like he's ripping off movies that ripped off his better movies. Mm, right. Yeah, yeah. And like the editing in this, especially in that whole first scene with the, the killer and all that, I was like, what the hell is going on here? Mm. It was just garbage. And people would just be like, I'm blurting something out. And they would, just, <laughs> you know, like this is relevant to the story. And they would just move on. I just could not get into it. I just kept laughing the entire time. And um, I'd also like to point out, this movie had a budget of $25 million. Yeah, well, what? Get the fuck have, out of here. No, no I, had, I had like a, a, an insane budget wow. from what we see on screen by the yeah. way. Jesus. I would, I would like to know where that budget went because this movie also lost three oh, and a half million. Oh, wait. I, I can tell you exactly where it went. It went to fucking 3D fucking post-conversion. Because this came out in 3D back it in the day. They were charging. In, it did come out 3D, yeah. This is like $14 to go see a fucking this piece of shit back in 2010. Oh. Fuck my ass. Wow. <laughs> I forgot it was 3D. <laughs> Seriously. Like, what the hell? That's a movie, yeah. Probably because this could have been a $5 million guys, movie, maybe. Guys, right. what you're forgetting is back in 2010, they were predicting that 3D, everyone would own a 3D TV, would all be 3D and everything that we do, and. All that's been proved there is that the studios were absolutely right. Um, all of us own 3D TVs. Everything we do is in 3D now, so that that totally took off. It was it was post it was um, it was retrofitted to 3D as well, wasn't it? It wasn't shot in 3D. No, no it doesn't look it. No, no. So I mean, that's even worse. <laughs> that's someone. That's someone. That is that. I would not be surprised if there was money laundering involved with that. <laughs> that twenty-five million. The mafia that fucking like, produces that. Hundred percent sounds like there's a scheme to get. We need to funnel this money through something. Three D. That's right? why the West Craven it. Estate is so freaking tight. That's why they See? we're not seeing a, a Nightmare on Elm Street anything. Everyone's like, "What is up? How come there's no remake? No this? No that?" Them. Yeah. Lock them. Yep. They're sitting exactly. on mounds. Yeah, man. <laughs> twenty-five million though. Does seem quite high. That's <laughs> like, nuts. Yeah. Especially in 2010. Yeah, yeah dude. Like, how much what was the Maxine? Blumhouse model now? You know? <laughs> I was going to say that what the Blumhouse model at the moment is no movies over 5 million. Right. And that's including pretty much, notwithstanding, like, the Halloween movies or that Exorcist movie, which we won't get to. Um, but but they're not more than 5. And most of that money's on market, and it's not actually on the filming. So 25 million seems like someone <laughs> made insane. out well from that. <laughs> Yeah, wow. Catering will only be lobster and caviar, um, because that's, that's and sham, champagne for all. And you will have a yacht, and you will have a yacht, and I will only travel by private private plane. That's how that we're doing that. That's the reason these that. actors, some of them aren't around anymore. It's not because they were this, bad. Well, they retired. Right. They fucking <laughs> one movie one and, and done. done. Yeah. <laughs> one and done. Thank you very much, and I will now retire from this job. Pop Bill uh, Max Thoreau. I mean, he that he made all of his money and went on to do nothing afterwards. So yeah, he's just sitting on it. Thank, he's thank a heartthrob. Yep. He's a heartthrob. I mean, let's be honest, Cole. Let's be honest. A little bit. I want little that bit. jawline. I want that jawline. Uh, Dan, Dan, uh, continue on. 
Uh, yeah, I don't really have much more to say about it. Well, let's get to your scores then. Uh, let's talk sure. about your scores. You said you wanted to be mean as Mark, which indicates that maybe you weren't as mean as him, but let's see if that bears out. Uh, what did you give the story? I gave it a three. Right, so that's two above Mark. What did you give the acting? <laughs> Um, I gave that a four, but that's only because of, uh, the guy who's like, I don't know, was he like 30 and playing a high schooler with a friend? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like he was cool. Like I, I was into that. <laughs> I was like, thank God somebody here is doing something good. So that's, that's one above Mark. That is interestingly three below Dave. Um, what about effects though? I gave it a four, and mm -hmm. in retrospect, I'm not sure why, because um, when, you know how Dave brought up the, the scene with the girl yeah. getting stabbed? I noticed that they just had taken some of the leaves, and they just, like, color graded them in, <laughs> like, digitally to just paint, be, yeah. like, reddish. Ah, right. But, yeah, there was just, like, way too much CGI blood. For no reason. That's, like, that's the time. Like, the you go, yep. like, like, yeah. If you look at Sadly. you look at what's coming out of like big studios, it's, that, like we are. Twenty ten is a horrible, horrible year because you're not in that. Like, like two years from from that point, practical effects are starting to make a bit more prominence from the indie stuff, and it's it's laziness. It's like we'll just pay this. We could spend a lot of money here. We could spend some of that twenty five million budget we've got on real like practical effects or we can just pay a guy with a computer to do some stuff and that guy's like <laughs> pay me please <laughs> like pay me <laughs> um see so no, interestingly so you are only one below dave but two above mark on that one um <laughs> what, what's your score for this soundtrack i gave it a three <laughs> <laughs> Only because there there was something, I guess. I don't know. Like that's higher than a one, at least. <laughs> like a one I, I mean, all the all the music that played at the end. I think I started laughing. Yeah. <laughs> when like the the credit song came on, I was like, "What the hell is this?" I stayed away from a lot of mainstream horror around yeah. this time. Mm. So There's a lot of people that had dropped off. And to be honest, unless you were following horror. Uh, if you, unless you were following foreign horror, as that's not a wrong choice. <laughs> like there's a lot of quality dipped a little bit there. And um, let's talk kills though. Kills. I gave it a four. Same as Dave. Um, I, I don't know. I just, just, <laughs> the, everything was just like it would it would cut away a lot and yeah. just really wouldn't focus on anything. So you know, right, like, well, why let's... should I see like? squiggly legs mm -hmm. when we could just see so much more yeah and you do get the feeling that like maybe wes was expecting more to be cut out of the movie than maybe would be by this time period um which i mean it's not uncommon like as directors get older they tend to go less graphic they tend to like even directors like the umpteen directors now that when you hear them on commentaries about the movies they would say they would go nowhere near as violent as they did in the 70s or 80s based on how they are now just over time it's, it's not it's not uncommon and you also got to remember that Wes Craven was an older director when you look at that master horrors list he was on the mm -hmm. him and George A. Romero were on the elder statesman side a good 10 years older than the majority of the ones that came before them because he just got into it much much later you scored this overall at a potential 50 18 points which is uh nine below what dave scored it but interestingly enough four above what mark scored it so thank you very much dan um <laughs> let's go to our final uh talking head and on this one here um cole anything you want to pick up here this was a first time viewing for you yes first time view yes and yes. i i when, after I saw this, I thought for sure I was going to come in lower than everybody else for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know why. Two things I want to preface, though, before I get into this is whenever it's a first time watch for a film, I do zero uh, research on it. I don't do trailers hmm. ever. And nice. I don't I don't try to look anything up. I just want the experience of, you know, whatever. And I always will watch it, review it, rate it, judge it based on the context of when it was made 
Mm -hmm. That being said, after this was, after I saw it, I, I thought for sure this was like late 90s, early 2000s. And I was <laughs> like, what the hell, 2010? I'm like, oh, okay. So that changed things a little bit here. And I feel like I'm on the other end of the spectrum. I, I, I wouldn't consider this a good movie, but I came in, I think, a little bit higher than than everybody else. And there's certain things I picked up. But again, I love dumpster diving and Tubi. So that has really, over the last couple of years, that's kind of leveled me out when it comes to rating films. Because if you've ever dredged the, the, the Kaibo of Tubi and Amazon Prime, you want to know what bad movies are. Just, just hop into one of those rabbit holes. <laughs> So you hear that you want to know what bad movies are speak to cole um yeah. let's let's go through your grades here um what did you give the story so story i gave it a five i thought it was serviceable i i am kind of shocked and embarrassed for Wes craven on the writing aspect of it because i thought the writing was pretty poor and and mm. that was one thing i was like you know come on a little bit disappointed with, but I thought it was okay. It could have been done better, but you know, right in the middle, average five out of ten. Right, so that's four above Mark. Interestingly enough, right in the middle between both Dave and Dan. Um, what did you give the acting? So the acting, I gave this a six, and it's because th there was some bad acting. But I looked at, you know, Bug for example. He was just kind of. At first, he kind of bothered me, but then I realized what he was kind of going for is that kind of innocent, bumbling idiot kind of thing. But Fang, I thought she was kind of over the top and ridiculous, and I loved it. Um, oh. So, you know, I, I was like, yeah, you know, I, six and a half. Nice. So you are in a position where you are about three above what Mark did. And once again, somewhere in between what Dave and Dan gave. Um, effects, this is where things get wild and I love it. Uh, what did you give the effects? Well, <laughs> well, <laughs> I may be a little bit high on the effects. And I don't know why. Honestly, I didn't notice all the CGI oh, stuff. Not? I gave it an eight because I yep. put the effects in the same category as like with the gore and the kills. Mm -hmm. One of the things I like my favorite part of the, the film was kind of that it reminded me of like, like, um, like, like kind of like Halloween esque where he perched her up along that. I thought it was a really cool shot where she was on, on the riverbank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the like perched up against the that that truck, like the Jeepers Creepers truck with all the candles and shit. I thought that was really cool. Um, you know, so I didn't really notice a lot of the CGI, but again, I was trying to look at it as far as in the times, you know, and mm -hmm. me thinking it was like late nineties, early two thousands, you know, I was a little bit shocked when it was two thousand ten or <laughs> whatever it was. Nice. That's an eight. So that is six above mark. Um, three above Dave and four above Dan. Uh, soundtrack, though, not far off anything here at all. Actually, weirdly, weirdly in line if we did an average. What did you give the soundtrack? Six and a half. I, I'm kind of one of those guys when it comes to like soundtrack and score. I think a lot of the times it goes unnoticed and you don't notice it per se mm -hmm. unless it's really bad or really good. And I thought it was fairly average. There's a couple songs that, you know, were of the times, you know, that, that kind of popped in and whatnot. So six and a half out of 10. Six and a half. That's a 0.5 above both Mark and 1.5 above Dave. A couple of points above um, Dan himself. And then lastly, kills. Um, and this is where we start making distance. Mm, uh, what did you yeah. give the, the kills? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. T talk about Midwest nice. Maybe a little high. Maybe a little high. Eight out of ten. Eight. Yep. There are a couple I really liked, and the one thing that I really appreciated. I mean, yeah, there was a neck slit, but I thought it was done pretty well because it wasn't just the neck slit where you see blood coming down. When she yep. was propped up, you could see the gap in the neck and i thought that was pretty cool and pretty well done so i'm like well that put it above an average neck kill you know in, in my opinion also when they like dave z was talking earlier about that stabbing scene i thought it was pretty brutal like a lot of the stabs you know you're just kind of like Ugh. i mean he was putting some force into it where i'm like damn like that that actor actress probably you know got shank pretty good there so i mean that was like some prison rules shanking so i thought it was a little bit more brutal um, but again, yeah, I mean, it's a little bit generous, but I, I feel like I need to 
back it up a little bit. I don't think it was awful, but eight's probably too yeah. high. But I like <laughs> it. It's um, it's double the scores that both Dan and Dave gave it, and four <laughs> yeah, times the score of what Mark yep. gave it. Uh, you're welcome. Um, <laughs> which means, out of a possible fifty, you gave it thirty-three and a half. Um, See, overall, but, I think that fits. So, well, let's talk, let's talk about overall then. Uh, if we're charting it out of the four hosts here on this show, Cole scored at the highest at thirty-three and a half. Um, coming in at second was Dave Z at 27, so not a huge gap between you two guys. The drop-off comes from the company Dan, who gave it 18, and then, of course, Mark, if you hadn't already guessed, uh, gave it 14. So Mark was the lowest score on that. Um, with that in mind... Are I you at least going to give us your average overall? Is that, like, top you secret? Will, you will get it right at the end. Right okay. at the end, I will let you know. Um, I will say this, not that I want to spoil things in advance. I am... Closer to Cole and Dave than I am to Dan and Mark. <laughs> Duncan so likes I trash. Was, I was hugely <laughs> surprised at the end of this movie. I didn't hate it at all. Uh, I really, really, really didn't. I, I genuinely thought I was going to come out and be like that. Oh, I mean, Wes Craven should have hung it up after Scream. Um, and I didn't. I didn't. I didn't feel that way at all, Mark. So sorry. Um, <laughs> but then again, I also do doing the nasty. So maybe my quality. Rotted well, your well, brain. Bad movie has just been destroyed. <laughs> uh, possibly, possibly. Uh, Mark Ball, with that in mind, thank you very much for representing I'll, the, I'll the step movie. Down. You can now, yeah, you can now step down from uh, the podium. Step uh, off. Uh, step out. Um, <laughs> right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's keep this going because we have another three movies to adjudicate here. Uh, up next, we're going to be discussing The Devils from 1971. It was written and directed by Ken Russell. When I say written, it's co uh, co-written by Ken Russell, based on the Aldous Huxley and John Whitting's source material. Uh, the DP on this one was David Watkins, who did To A Devil A Daughter, classic hammer horror, and Moonstruck. And if you like Cher, you'll know why I've included that. Um, the score yeah. is done by Peter Maxwell Davies, um, who's actually, believe it or not, not known for a lot of stuff. He's done very minimal um, score work as a composer. He's led into a lot more composition, but not necessarily writing scores. Cast for this one is ridiculous um for the for the era uh most notably with vanessa redgrave and oliver reed but you've got uh, dudley sutton max adrian Gemma jones murray melvin michael gotham georgina hale brian murphy graham armitage and john woodvin um synopsis for this one is in 17th century france father urban grandier's protection of the city of Loudon from the corrupt cardinal richelieu is undermined by a sexually repressed nun's accusation of witchcraft, or as we call it in Scotland, Tuesday. Um, <laughs> Oliver, <laughs> on the trivia, this is Oliver, Oliver Reed's favourite film of his own, that he, st he starred in. Uh, the film was so controversial that Warner Brothers was reluctant to release it on DVD. An online pe petition convinced the BFI, that's the British Film Institute, to release it. Uh, the 1971 UK X-rated cut of the film finally on dvd and most notably this movie is still to be released in its original form um and we will never see that now at this stage it's not happening so as much as we can as much as bloody disgusting can post an article every three years on how it should happen it'll never happen um and this movie is included most notably amongst the 1001 movies you must see before you die there was loads of other trivia i included most of it involved non-sex and i thought I'm on a call with guys, and that might not help with the review. Um, that's the information. Now we've got that out of the way. Uh, the podcast under the stairs at this time would like to call to the stand, either representing or condemning the movie The Devils, uh, Mr. Dave Z. Dave, um, if you would like to give us your thoughts on this movie, please. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, <laughs> distinguished Judge McLeish, I... I have no clue at this moment if I am supposed to be the prosecution or the defense attorney because of my feelings for this movie. Ooh. I am put in a, in, a, in a quandary of best made versus best because there is mm. a difference. Mm -hmm. I am put in a quandary of 
trying to figure out if I come off as the nice guy or if I come off as heel Dave Z and just start spitting venom. Because I don't know what to think about this movie. Uh, it was a first time watch. Oh, wow. Right. Yeah, I um, I don't know why I was never interested in it to begin with, but I can tell you that once I start watching the movie, um, I appreciate that it's based on fact. I appreciate the, the um, that it is a real story. To a degree, I mean, as far as there are, you know, f- facts of, of things that have happened. And then there you go with the word facts. Uh, you have facts and you have opinions. And what I can say about the movie is, like, for, for somebody like me watching the movie, I the accents right away are a little bit tough for me. Pardon me, but it's this, this, it's just the truth. Some of the And I did not have subtitles. So I'm watching it and I'm probably only getting about... 70% of what's being said. It just happens occasionally. So again, that's probably a me problem. I uh, <laughs> I don't understand whether or not this movie is intended to be taken seriously or it's comical. And that's tough for me. I'm not a big fan of a horror comedies to begin with, and I'm not a fan of when I see comedy in movies that I think it would be better off without it. But then there's a movie like this, and I'm like, are they going for one thing or are they going for the other? And I am not mm-hmm. the person that can tell you the answer to that. Uh, I'm going to have to leave this for everyone else because I have a feeling, because there's so many good aspects about it, that people are going to be fine. Uh, they may even love it. The thing is, me, the worst thing you can do for a movie is bore me. And mm. what happened to me was it moved too fast in the beginning. There was too much going on. And it, I, my problem, doesn't mean it's a bad movie. It means that I don't like it. Um, and at one point, there's a line in the movie that says, what kind of a trick are you trying to play on us? And then he says, what kind of a trick are you trying to play on us? And then yeah. that's how I feel right now. What kind of a trick is the movie <laughs> trying to play on me? <laughs> so... I do not like the movie, I but I think it, it is made with quality. It's just not my jam. So there you have it. Thank you very much. I, I was super like, see when you landed this, um, I didn't. I I assumed that you'd seen it before, but knowing your tastes the way I know your tastes, I was always super curious to see where this was going to land. Um, because like, it, it can be one of those ones we've spoken, we've done reviews before in the past where I, I have an inkling that you're not going to like something and then we sit down and chat and you're like, no, no, this is totally this bit here is the bit where I was like, this unlocks the whole story for me, I really got invested right. and then there's other movies from like this, it's a, like, a home run Dave Z coming up right here <laughs> and we're sat down and you're like that, oh no, that's just as soon as they said that, the movie fell apart and I'm like, alright, right <laughs> so, um your scores reflect this in and, and the most wonderful way. Um, let's, let's let's run through these, Dave. Um, let's talk story. What did you give it out of 10? I gave it a 5 because I wasn't mm-hmm. sure what was fair. Uh, I have to respect the fact that it's based on events that have happened, and I get that. I just personally didn't vibe with the, the, the storytelling format. Mm-hmm. So I can't insult it and say just because I don't vibe with it or I don't get it that I should rate it low. So Mm -hmm. it's a bit of a cop out at at a five out of 10, but it's just one I was stuck with. I mean, I think that's fair. I think if you, if you're not sure how (laughs) how you're supposed to take something going down the middle is like, is, is more than adequate for me. Um, acting. You know, acting, I gave it a nine because I respect, Mm -hmm. I can, I can recognize great acting and I see that pretty much throughout. I mean, I, I can't say anything. So I think people that do love this movie, that's one of the things they're going to say about it. They're going to say, this, this, you're not going to get a much better acted movie, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And I get that. So I cannot insult it. Oliver Reed was fantastic. So much, I didn't even realize it was Oliver Reed till halfway through the movie. And so good. dude, I just watched the night before, I had just watched um, uh, Burnt Offerings. And, oh, God. Which yeah. I love. And I'm watching Burnt Offerings one night. Yeah, that's Oliver Reed. And then I'm watching this, and because of the year, whatever, it just... (laughs) I was like, oh, wow, that's him. I just saw him last night. It didn't register until now. 
But anyway, it, it, it's it's good acting. It's great acting. I, I can't say and sit here and sit here and say that it wasn't. So, so that's a nine out of ten for that. What did you give the effects? Uh, eight, all around. I thought they, mm-hmm. you know, as far as the the sets and everything else, the lighting, you know, the, all that stuff, and what they were doing uh, with makeup or what have you. But all around, yeah, I think that's fair. I think it's, it's very good. And soundtrack? Soundtrack, I gave a six. A little little mm-hmm. over, you know, just a eh. It was good, but not the kind of soundtrack that I'm, I'm going to remember, but but it was good. And lastly, Kills. Kills, there's really only the one. Uh, well, <laughs> I, well, I give the one a four that I'm going mm-hmm. with, just not because of the... The manner of it, because it's not, I mean, I wasn't crazy about even the bubbling on the face. It was fine. It was adequate. Mm. But I think I was into the, the presentation of the kill. I counted that as well, because I didn't want to just say, you know, I think four is fair, just because I think the build up to the kill was kind of emotional. So I'll give it credit for that. Yeah, it's also not the drive of the movie. The movie's not designed for that. Right. You know, it's not It's not set up for that. Which means, actually, for, for someone that was maybe, maybe unsure of the movie overall, when when we pull your scores in together, out of a maximum of 50, you give this movie 32, uh, which wow. is a very respectable score, I would say, overall. Now, Dave, I don't want you to move because this is where I open it to other hosts to come in. Uh, we're going to go in the order of the movies that will be discussed tonight, which means I'm going to turn over to... Uh, Mark Ball, notoriously low scoring Mark Ball, because um, <laughs> that's his new nickname. It's a bit long and wordy, but we'll get with it. Uh, Mark, is there anything you want to pick up from what Dave said here? Anything that you agree with, anything you disagree with, or anything in between? Uh, so th- this was a first time watch for me also. Uh, this is a notoriously <laughs> hard to get a hold of movie. This apparently ran on Shudder for a really brief time, like maybe a year ago or so. But yeah, uh, after watching this, I could kind of understand why Warner Brothers just wants to bury this thing. Uh, I would love to know <laughs> what the budget on this one was, too, because I think they spent at what was at the time a goddamn fucking fortune on this oh, movie. It was a very and, expensive movie, yeah. And then I saw it and they're like, what do we do? what do we do with this like uh they so, gave the money to ken russell ken russell is a notorious yeah. sex pest like yeah, every they, they movie he makes they're getting is just themselves into. full of sex <laughs> so they gave him money and then they were like that he's given us like like nuns having no we can't have that like, <laughs> I, I, it blows my mind that anyone was surprised that like whatever he delivered was what they got yeah it really really does so yeah, I, I was pumped to finally get to see this, and uh, I I fucking loved this movie, man. Like I nice. I have never been more wrecked watching a movie for one thing. <laughs> there's something about there's something about nuns repressing their sexuality that really fucking does. Have to they have to mandate a rule that you need to like whack one out before you score a movie. <laughs> like that, like literally, like you like, see so that post nut clarity before you put down fucking scores. Do no. need to mandate that in what we're doing here, Marvel? Is that what you're telling me? If you, it depends, do you, do you want mean Mark or do you want generous Mark? <laughs> mean Mark might, yeah, might be after that in the post nut clarity where the the Catholic guilt kicks in. But uh, yeah, b- b- beforehand, I'm I'm gonna be real generous and uh, so you call it. Give, I gave this fucker five stars on Letterboxd. <laughs> <laughs> Right, uh, let's let's run through your scores. Oh my good god, uh, I wasn't ready for that. Uh, let's talk story. What did you give the story? This is, this is a ten, man. This is a, this is a Boom. brilliant religious horror movie that like is just like a scalding fucking like pot of water thrown at the fucking church. Which for 1971, I I respect the balls on it. All right, acting. What did you give it? I think this is a 10, man. Oliver Reed's fucking brilliant. Every Everybody is great in this. There, there are so many great little bits like that every character gets. Like This is a tour de force of insane acting. The more you know about Oliver Reed, um, the more movies you watch him, the more you realize that everything he was doing, he was absolutely fucking hammered. Yep. And like every yeah. scene he is drunk. He's out. He, like he's so drunk in everything that he does. But in this movie's impressive. Me... He's got these long ass soliloquies in oh. the old English, like scene after scene of it. Like it's, yep. it's impressive. Yeah, he's, he, he came up through the stage, Mark. Through the stage. Yep. Um Right. So you gave that. So, so that's only one above what Dave gave it. What about effects? 
uh effects what did i give oh uh, effects <laughs> i gave this a nine uh the, especially the the scene with the uh, the cupping with the hornets underneath the cups uh about made me jump out of my fucking skin like that looked <laughs> gross as hell and was super effective that's one above what dave gave it um soundtrack uh soundtrack i came a little lower on this i give this a seven most of the soundtrack i think works in this i don't really like experimental music until the synthesizer was invented basically i don't really like the the big band like it sounds like we're just throwing the orchestra down the stairs type shit and there <laughs> there's quite a bit of that in this it, it gives me a little bit of a headache so yeah the, but the rest of it's totally serviceable so i give us a seven once again that's one above what dave gave it and kills uh, kills i gave this an a that might, that might be a little yeah. high like you said this that's that not really the so point of this movie yeah. like what what violence is in this movie i think is really effective and really gross and really fucking skeezy so uh yeah i give it an eight right well let's talk about overall scores for you mark ball at a possible 50 you give this movie fucking 44 <laughs> uh, 50 <laughs> so i will say that it sounds like you may have enjoyed this movie yep Right, this was good. Masturbated to one of the two. Um, like, let's let's uh, let's move on. Dan, that was this was, was this the first time viewing for you as well? Then, no, no, it's not my first right. viewing. There we go. Dan knows. Um, give us <laughs> give us your deets on this. Anything that you want to kick back on? Anything you want to double down on? What's your views? Um, I'll say this: the first time I watched this, I did not like it at all. Hmm. Like I was completely repulsed by everything not in a oh religious people are doing naughty things i was just like <laughs> it just gave me the ick just the way it looked and everything but something clicked this time around and i'm i gotta admit like this for this episode and this could be this consider this a spoiler it's the superior film mm. of everything that we watched but i think it's artiness also makes it feel way too obtuse mm -hmm. to be uh acceptable for even a unless you're like a seasoned audience yeah i, I was at a distillery earlier today and people <laughs> were asking like what are you doing I'm later on. <laughs> and <laughs> and they were like what movies are you covering and what are they about and this is the one that always just tripped me up because how do you explain this to people who don't watch a lot of how, wild how you, movies yeah how do you explain this movie without it sounding like something you may have watched on Pornhub that you're passing off as an actual movie <laughs> right like, so it was a whole lot of sidestepping everything I was like I don't know it was banned yeah. in a lot of countries because it made religion seem like it was nasty mm. at a time period where movies were making religion seem like they were nasty so it is following tracked if you look at it like early 70s that's the that's the thing the church is either saving the world or it's condemning the world it's like there's no middle ground really there's yeah. no someone was like the church is fair um that doesn't exist in that time period <laughs> uh, the devil's just doubles down on on and like, like Dave mentioned before, is based on true, based on true events, but actually grounded in historical events. The script that was written after is obviously sensationalized a lot of it, um, but it is in you know it did happen. People did die. Those people are you know portrayed on screen. Um, maybe not in the way. <laughs> maybe not in that way. Um, but yeah, I mean it is for that. But I, I, so. I, so uh, I'm curious, so the previous times you had watched it before, when you say they didn't connect, they didn't connect because you appreciate the filmmaking, but not necessarily the story, or this time you more gravitate toward a certain aspect? I mean, could, could, if I if I asked you to drill down into why you think it may be connected more this time around, would you actually know, or is it just you organically just acclimate it? Yeah, it's just, yeah, organic is the way to describe it, mm. because... I just couldn't get into it before. I was like, I don't get what the hype is. What is going mm. on with this? And second time around, it just, like, a light turned on. I was like, oh, I get it. Like, oh, okay, here we are. This is this movie. And I found myself getting really into it. I mean, perhaps it was because 
I watched it like all the other movies with headphones on, and I normally don't do that, but mm-hmm. I don't know. Hmm. Well, let's let's see where you land on the the, the realms of scoring. At the moment, we've got Dave on thirty two, Mark on fucking forty four. Jesus Christ, Mark. Um, let's <laughs> let's go through your scores. What did you give Story? I gave it an eight. But that's um, three above Dave. What did you give the acting? I gave that one a nine. Spot on with Dave. Everybody's just acting their asses off in this movie. And what did you give the effects? A seven. So that's one below what Dave gave it. The yeah, soundtrack? I, no, no, um, go back to effects, sorry. Yeah. Um, I think it was the... And this might have turned me off the first time I watched it, but it was the um, not historically accurateness of the design for everything. Mm-hmm. Because I ended up reading into it after this viewing and just how he wanted everything to just not look historically accurate and he wanted it yeah. to be kind of weird, futuristic, modern, like it's classic like, Ken Russell, yeah. Like a yeah, Ken like Russell somebody movie. getting like raped in a subway, you know? <laughs> <laughs> classic Ken Russell. Nailed it, um, I guess. <laughs> Well done, Ken. Uh, let's talk as with the effects. Let's talk soundtrack. Uh, I gave it a seven. Um, mm-hmm. I, I kind of agree with the the whole band getting thrown down the stairs <laughs> type it's of opinion to, because hard to write that on a, a notation sheet for 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 writing music. It, band falls downstairs. No, the orchestra's that. You you small with Mark score. You're only one above Dave though. Which brings me to kills. I gave it a five um, mm-hmm. because yeah, there is the only one, only the one kill. But I mean, he's really just given it in that scene, mm-hmm. and I, I liked the transition of him burning and the fire, and just like the trippiness of seeing everybody mocking him and ridiculing him as he's just going on and on and really just giving them the business so I th- yeah I, felt it's, it was- like, it's, I was gonna say it's interesting to if you look if you want to like me i love context and i love history and like it's specific, specifically in horror movies this comes a year before wicker man um and it does kind of feel like wicker man maybe have maybe borrowed one or two elements of the burning <laughs> scene specifically from how the people react around the wicker man when it is burning um and i would never say that publicly except on a podcast so <laughs> um but it does kind of feel like it may have had an influence there um you did give it a five which to be honest you're like pretty much in between both dave and mark there so you're not wildly off which means i can tell you than that out of a total of all 50 points you could have given this movie you give it a 36 which is actually only four above dave um is six below mark but uh thank you very much uh, i'm glad it resonated more with you this time round. um go uh, first time viewing yeah n- not only is this a first time view i had never heard of this and oh I wow love, right cool. yeah and i love oliver reed and th- this is one of those films. I watched this earlier this week. I uh, got home from work and my wife was going to pick up my son from practice. And I was like, I'll, I'll, I'll pop it on, you know, in the living room while I'm eating dinner. Every time I watch a film like this, it never fails. The first part of the film, pretty standard. Okay. Mm-hmm. Of course they come home and there's giant douches and nun orgy. And I'm like trying to pause it. And because normally I watch it in the basement. So I'm like, well, that, that's, that's lovely. And then I have to explain, you know, what the hell are you doing? What are you watching? So yeah, thanks for that. Um, I got a ton of notes on this. I'm going to speed through them real Go quickly. I, I did thoroughly enjoy this film. And the first thing I thought of after this was done was like, wow, this is a very thematically rich film that, I would love to do a deep dive on. So I, I really enjoyed that part of it. Uh, the score, I, what drew me in right away was the score with that opening kind of funeral procession and that party kind of going on at the same time. And I'm a huge Shining fan and it's the exact same. It's that horned Song. intro. To, yeah. Sorry. Yep. I just realized I wrote that down. I forgot the time. I noticed it right away. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So opening. I saw that and I was like, God, man. So yeah, I, I love that. I, I play that in, I, I put that in a lot of our episodes too, just 
I, I love it. I love it. So that kind of drew me in. Um, you know, also thematically, again, it, it kind of counteracts itself in certain ways with, I think, Dave, you were talking a little bit about the comedy aspects of it, which kind of threw me for a loop, you know, but I kind of loved Oliver Reed's look in this. I can see how you didn't recognize him because like when he's walking through that pond, I'm like, oh, there's Kim Coates, you know, just, just <laughs> walk the water. Uh, but overall, I thought the score was pretty great, but the biggest problem I had with this film was kind of how it contradicts certain scenes um you know the example mother superior when she was getting stuck with that giant douche and there was weird circus music going on which which contradicted the brutality of that scene yeah and then like overlaid almost the same time you have you, you have oliver reed laying in his bed just in his majesticness giving his his monologue and there's that somber music going on and i'm like well that just doesn't kind of really make sense um but i mean the the commentary on the catholic church and the scene with that fake eucharist and like i just wish back in the 70s this just the biggest middle finger this gave i i just i would have loved to be around in the 70s to kind of see the perception it had uh but i i did i thoroughly enjoyed this film and and i'm kind of mad at myself that i'd never seen it before I love the, the the fact that we can do this on these shows and get people watching movies and um, they've not seen before. Uh, it's, it's one of those things that it was. It's the ethos of the summer series is oh, people will always inevitably be in a position where they they get a chance to see something that they have never watched before. And um, let's talk your scores then. Um, for someone that enjoyed it as much as they say, do the scores reflect that? What did you give story? Story I gave an eight out of ten. I, I did think it had the the, the whole. I mean, for an almost two-hour movie, I thought it did a pretty good job fleshing it out, and I really enjoyed the direction it took. Yep. If we were doing averages overall from the four scores, eight would probably be the average, so you're spot on there. Uh, acting? Nine out of ten, man. I mean, I pretty much loved everybody uh, in their roles in this. Virginia Hart Hartgrave or Redgrave, I can't remember her. She, Vanessa. she was yeah. or Vanessa, Vanessa, that's right. Yeah. yeah. She, she. I love her. She's awesome. She's still kicking, too. I found that out, and and she's still acting uh, it, like almost she's married, to, married to Franco Nero as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, her and Oliver Reed, man. Also too, the one thing I will say is if you guys don't know the story of Oliver Reed and the glider, that's what kind of got me into him. Do a little research on that. Like he is the ultimate, like badass man's man had a heart attack filming the gladiator got hammered one night at a bar, kicked a bunch of sailors asses, drank a shitload of alcohol and beer and, croaked over in like malta or something like man that guy was a piece yeah, he, of he, like, he died he died after doing all that after yeah. doing all that he, yeah he, his body was He's like such a badass. Yeah. <laughs> like, <Wow. laughs> uh, right so you gave acting a nine which once again if i was doing averages overall from all four hosts nine would be the average um effects yeah seven out of ten um you know not, nothing super spectacular that came out but you know, for for the time again, given the context of the seventies, I thought it was done pretty well. Once again, on averages, that would be spot on soundtrack. Uh, I gave the soundtrack a nine, and again, I was a little bit honey dick with the with the whole shining thing coming in, but I kind of love that orchestral, you know, kicking the band down the stairs kind of thing. I guess um, the only problem, and I don't know if I would give it a contract or. A, um, a contrast as far as a knock against a soundtrack would be maybe the editing of it and mm. the way that it was juxtaposed with certain scenes. But I kind of did love the, the, the orchestral theme of it overall. Nice. So it's a little bit higher than what has already come in, but let's finish off on kills. What'd you give kills? I gave it a seven. I, I cheated a little bit. I mean, obviously there was that one kill that we've all talked about, but I kind of, lumped in brutality because man if there's some hard scenes to watch in this you know with the 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 rape and those i can't believe nobody brought up those two crazy little fake doctor guys that had oh. that cartoon style douches and stuff like man it was it was rough it was <laughs> I, I don't know. I, it was brutal. It was brutal. I, I, and I was like, that has to be talked about. So I'm going to kind of lump that in with the <laughs> uh, and, and I kind of, I, yeah, it was, it was effective. We'll, we'll go with that. 
Nice, right. So overall, out of a maximum of 50, you scored this movie a 40, which means that we can say that Mark scored this the highest at 44. Um, you scored it second highest with 40. Um, third highest scoring was Dan with 36. And fourth was Dave with 32. With that in mind, uh, we thank Dave Z for representing this movie. Uh, we can send him back now. Um, and then we're going to bring up our next host. But before we do that, we have some more details. The next movie is Grave Encounters. This is 2011. Dear God Almighty, do I feel old right now? Um, this is both written and directed by the Vicious Brothers. The DP on this one is Tony Mirza, who has done loads of TV work, but more importantly, and in context of what we're discussing, Grave Encounters 1 and 2. The score is done by Quinnen Craddock, who also has done a bit of score and work for other things, but more importantly, Grave Encounters 1 and 2. The movie itself stars Benjamin Wilkinson, Sean Rogerson, Ashley Grisco, Merwin Mondesir, Julie... No, that's not Julian, that's Juan. <laughs> that's <laughs> I've added letters. Um, He's the guy with your favourite line. Come on now. I know. I <laughs> look, give a second. Give a, uh, yeah, I saw a ghost over here. It was a really scary. It was a really scary. Um, Juan Redinger, uh, Sean McDonald, Arthur Corby, um, and Mackenzie Gray. Uh, synopsis for this one is for their ghost hunting reality show a production crew locked themselves inside the, an abandoned mental hospital that's supposedly haunted and it might prove to be all too true a little bit of trivia on this one here this one was a lean production it was filmed over 10 nights um and two days and that is literally nice. it so not long at all. Uh, the director set out to differentiate Grave Encounters from other iconic found footage films, such as The Blair Witch Project, by being less subtle with the demons. He wanted the demons to be visibly running at you, rather than just moving objects and slamming doors. Uh, and then the last one, which I'm, I, I know IMDb loves, but the fact that these two movies are in the same sentence makes me smile. Similar to Cloverfield, uh, the film's only soundtrack is played during the end credits. So, um, I can think of a multitude of other movies that the soundtrack is only played over the end credits. But let's link it to Cloverfield, because IMDb. Um, representing this movie, uh, either for or against, um, the podcast understands would like to call to stand, please, Dan. Dan, I'm looking forward to hearing you make your case. The floor is now yours. Oh boy. Okay, well, I'm well prepared for this. <laughs> uh -oh. I actually wrote everything out. Um, uh, just aced constitutional law class in college, so <laughs> not bad for a guy who's 48. So, <clears throat> my fellow horror head to head, volume one, episode four, roundtable members, and our gracious host, Duncan. I present to you my case in favor of the Vicious Brothers 2011 found footage film, Grave Encounters. Grave Encounters takes an interesting approach with the premise that this movie is the raw footage for a paranormal investigation program that was mysteriously delivered to the show's producer, only edited for time, and was meant to be the sixth episode of a paranormal investigation program of the same name, Grave Encounters. I must be forthcoming and state that I am very familiar with the format established by Grave Encounters as a longtime fan of paranormal investigation programs of varying quality from good to outright garbage. <laughs> However, I must also state that the more sensational <clears throat> ghost adventures, the less I like them. I must say that this movie absolutely nails the vibe that said grave encounters delivers on what one may or even may not want to happen while watching one of these programs the small cast brings natural feeling reactions while their characters are locked in for the night in a defunct mental health facility our team of ghost hunting crew tropes gets more than they bargained for as they discover ghosts are not only real but also willing to do harm the crew finds themselves in a limbo beyond that of time and continuously bickers and 
begins to lose their minds, not unlike the restless spirits before them in life. While we can view some of the CGI jump scare ghostly face morphing effects as cliche by the standards of today, I applaud them for being the same nature of YouTube clips that made countless unsuspecting children and grandparents shit themselves silly <laughs> while falling off a chair. <laughs> what a time to be alive that was. <laughs> Lovers of the word fuck rejoice as Grave Encounters will deliver it in buckets throughout. The main reason why this expletive gets thrown out like free candy from a pedal van is due to the many unexplained sounds about the old asylum. The sound design of phantom bangs and squeaky wheelchairs makes up for the lack of suspenseful soundtrack and is a testament to its commitment to allow the viewer's imagination to fill the void of sound with that of Does Grave Encounters lack of special effects harm it not by any means the building itself is a treasure trove of atmosphere alone in fact the more chilling moments come from the practical effects of objects moving on their own or being thrown about while this movie does feature some cgi it is brief and serves to enhance the scares it does far more with less oh but grave encounters is a found footage movie mm -hmm. Ah, the dreaded found footage subgenre of horror lamented by so many. Complaints often include a lack of story, cheap production, and weak character development. And those filmmakers always have to fill the film with excuses for the characters to continue filming. And that's just to name a few. Which, I mean, honestly, like this guy, he's trying to make a show. So why wouldn't he want to keep recording when he's getting everything he wants mm -hmm. but as a studious horror viewers as we are right we must acknowledge that many movies we watch and love feature many of the same faults and are applauded because of those faults grave encounters is no different cheap is what makes horror not only a labor of love and entertaining but also, a great return on investment. So, what if it had no budget? It provides some genuinely spooky atmosphere and a few what-the-fuck jump scares with a budget of only 120,000 US dollars, and it earned 5.4 million US dollars, thus proving itself a success. I rest Thank my you, game. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dan. I, like, I, I feel like right now we should be throwing toilet rolls. Like over the, the crowd right now, like Dan, Dan, like slow clap somewhere <laughs> starting there. Um, like I, I always come back to one of the, the, the big things I always come back to when it when it comes to grave encounters. Uh, it was way back at the start of podcast under the stairs and me tormenting my uh, long suffering co host Baz, um, and uh, we did a live commentary of this movie. <laughs> And um, I thought I'll get at least one or two scares, and it terrified the ever loving fuck out of him, um, all the way right through. It. So many quotes and like moments I can just put in, like clips for for eternity, because it just kept going. Um, and he openly said at the end of it, he's like, "I mean, it's a cheap movie." I was like, "Yeah, but cheap can be scary," and that's that's literally all you need. Like, it doesn't it doesn't hide the fact it's a cheap movie. Um, you've spoken very impassioned about this movie, so I'm curious to see if the scores back up, or if this is a case of, I enjoy it, but technically speaking, this is where it falls apart. Uh, Dan, give me your scores on story. I gave the story an 8.5 for very being very nice. authentic to the, the ghost show format. Oh, it's 100%. It's so on point that if you didn't know and you stumbled halfway into this, without knowing it's a movie. I think you could watch quite a bit of it before you realise it's a movie. Um, acting, what did you give it? I gave it a 6.5. Um, I gave it a little bit lower because, I don't know, it's just a lot of just freaking out all the time, but mm. it felt believable in the moment. Uh, effects? I gave them a 6 because... Um, the CG was, like I said, it was just kind of shoddy. Listen, there's there's no shortage of movies that post-grave <laughs> post encounters oh, do the face. 
yeah, you know what that's, I mean? that's just not for me though. I don't, I find that dumb. But. Yeah, <laughs> so the, the 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 long black extended face thing as an effect, I don't, I can't remember seeing it much before Grave Encounters, and then all I could see after Grave Encounters was that in every movie, <laughs> like it was like yep. just became the norm. So I get, I, 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 yeah, I don't think it's a terrible, terrible grade you're giving soundtrack. Which, uh, in the sound- case of this movie, is really sin design, so... Well, um, so, before it came out that we could rate it on sound design... Sorry. <laughs> it, it was a one, because I was like, well, wow, there's no soundtrack, right. I don't know. But, um, once it was, once I learned that, yeah, so you can use that as a factor, I was like, oh, okay, so, good. Um, I gave it a six. Mm-hmm. It's all the creepy noises you want to hear in this scenario. But nothing super spectacular. Nothing blood curdling. What about um, kills? I gave it a four. It cuts away too much. Or they'll have like an effect that happens that blocks it out, or the camera falls and you can't see it and you just see the aftermath. And while that can be maybe a little more realistic for what it's trying to sell, you got to see it on screen. I get you, I get you. Out of a total of 50 then, you gave this movie 31. Uh, thank you very much, Dan. This is where it open it up. So this is like the hosts, the gloves are coming off, the mean faces. Are, there is no, what was it, Midwest? What, did, what was it called? The Midwest Nice. Midwest yeah. Nice. That's that's getting dropped right now. That, like, <laughs> uh, like we're, we're going to, 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 to Wyoming. <laughs> that's not a real I, place. I could not think of uh, like a W. Anyway, uh, Mark, 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 Mark. Yes. Notoriously weird reviewer who goes very low or very high. Uh, I'm curious to see if we land in the middle with Grave Encounters. Anything you want to counter on? Anything that you'd seen this movie before, so th- this isn't like a first time watch, was it? Uh, no, this was a first time watch, actually. Fucking uh, hell. Wow. Who are you right now, and why are you like why are you on this show? Get no, to bed. I, I, I've known uh, there's this one, this one's got its fans. Uh, I, I remember a lot of people really liking this back in the day, and for whatever reason, I waited fucking 13 years or whatever. To I watch won't this do one this finally. until I'm called up for a weird format and a show to do it. Yep, I was <laughs> saving it. I knew 13 years later I would need it for this, but uh, I'm, I'm kind of mixed on. On this one i there's 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 elements this i really like and there's elements of this that have aged like fucking milk honestly <laughs> uh like i think this this has a really good setup i think like the, the this gets our our story and our backstory out of the way like real quick so we can finally get to some spooky stuff and uh, there, there, there's a lot of spooky stuff. I just think, yeah, the the effects in this have aged really badly. The 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 the, the one like real kill that we see is with the uh, the guy that's pretending to be a clairvoyant, and uh, it's oh, it's, Houston. Houston is the greatest character oh, in cinema history. He, he he's a so great character, but his kill is really like it's it's really disappointing. It, it looks like it's a fucking. Hadoukened. I mean, cool what's wrong with that? I, I guess that's what happens, kind of. You can't really, like, you can't really... It's done so badly, you can't really see what the fuck is going on. He kind of just blips out of the out of the frame, which is, like, 20 feet away, and it's like, what? What was that? What happened? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I saw a ghost oh, over it. here. It was a really scary. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do appreciate that this was kind of one of the earlier movies to poke fun at the uh, the, the Ghost Bros type shows because uh, they're, they're still making them, man. Fucking, I think I'm pretty sure Zach Baggins was in my hometown over the solstice doing a doing a thing here. So money, 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 yep. money. Yep. So this this is early to the game on that, and it's 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 a thing that's been done a zillion times in other movies at this point, but it like. Uh, it can be done in a way like where your characters are super grating and like you don't like you don't even want to watch them long enough to see them get killed horribly or anything and uh, this one thankfully I think escapes this I, I think the characters are pretty they're pretty well rounded if they're not completely unlikable so 
uh, that that helps, I think, kind of keep you in it. They, they still at some point have to do the thing where it's like, why the fuck are you still filming kind of deal? And like it, it does, I think, do that a little too long in this where it really is just like you're still doing the show thing, man. Like any anybody else, like the things you've seen at this point in the movie would have just melted their fucking brain in like a Lovecraftian fashion where you're just now <laughs> permanently insane because you saw a fucking devil face dude in an asylum hanging from the ceiling or whatever like it's, it's a, but you know it's it's a it's it's a goofy movie i can't like slight it for logic too much in fact that's uh, kind of when i like it the most is when it's subtly illogical and when it like mm. plays around with time and kind of tries to fuck with your head like i think what it doesn't show is way more effective than anything this movie does show interesting let's go to scores then for this one to give story for this one uh, story i gave this a seven like i said this, this has a pretty good setup there's not a lot to it it doesn't really require a whole lot but what is there i think is pretty effective so that's a 1.5 below dan uh, acting acting is a six it, it's fine like i said everybody's pretty uh pretty serviceable in this and not super fucking annoying so it's a 0.5 below dan <laughs> this is breaking my heart here. Uh, effects, Mark. Effects, I give this a two. This is fucking this, hell. Fuck I, off. I hate the effects in this. They're, they're terrible. <laughs> they look like shit. <laughs> At the time, they didn't look like shit. Well, they look like shit because. But right, anyway, anyway, yeah, yeah. right. That's it. That's, that, that's, that feels needlessly mean. Um, that's <laughs> Maybe four, you, you might be right. Four, four below uh, what Dan gave out. Um, soundtrack slash sound design. Uh, I gave this a four. This is kind of one I, kind of, I regret not watching this through headphones. Mm. I think probably would have added a lot to this. I, I just watched this on the TV with the sound system and like a thousand fans and air conditioning going. So <laughs> uh, like, yeah, th there's no music. This gets some major points off for there being a big, dumb, like scare stinger chord. Like every time anything even remotely spooky happens, I think that kind of, it takes away from the scariness. Like, like I said, this this works better when shit's subtle and occasionally the sound design is not so subtle. So that's um, a four for some tracks, two below what Dan gave it, and then lastly, Kills. <laughs> kills is Mark, a fucking... Fu this is a two. <laughs> that, the, the, the one with Indiana or whatever the hell his name is is, is awful, bad and laughable. Everybody else kind of just disappears out of this movie if I recall. Like, I, I'm that's struggling. a bathtub scene. The bathtub scene is yeah, amazing. It is. I love that scene. There's a, a bathtub full of blood and someone gets dragged into it. How do you not like that scene? Why are you being mean, Mark? Let's get to the bottom of this. Well, I understand that you couldn't masturbate to this movie, or if, <laughs> you, if you were going to, gonna, it. it would be challenging. Wasn't repulsed but... by it. Not doing it for me. Right. Uh, so it's a two for kills. <laughs> I, two. I mean... I like I almost want to buy you a happy meal. Um let's let's talk let's talk overall. Out of out of fifty, you give this movie a twenty one mark. That, that, okay, that might, uh, th this was also the first thing I watched too, so this one this one may have my goofiest of scores, but uh I don't know. I, I was generous in some some factors of that. That's why I said that I'm kind of mixed on this one. Like there's parts of this I really <laughs> like. I think this movie is one pyramid head away from being a fucking silent hill movie. <laughs> Which, like, yeah, you, you throw in some fucking weird Japanese synth pop into the soundtrack and fucking, all right, I'm in. You're, you're I, fully erect. I'm understand. fully, I'm double erect. <laughs> double erect. Twin dongs. Nice. <laughs> um, right. Um, thank you very much, Mark, for that illuminating yet slightly disturbing and questionable scoring. As uh, usual. Let's, let's, let's turn over to Dave Z. Any comments you want to make off what? Um, I was going to say what Mark don't don't. Do you want to make any sense of what Mark just said? Don't engage <laughs> with what Mark said. Engage with what Dan said. Anything you want to pick up on? Anything you agree with? Disagree with? Something in the middle? Oh, I I'm a big fan of this movie. Uh, had been for for a long time. It's you're I a don't... big fan of found footage though. It's what is worth yes. saying. You are like when I when I go for a view on found footage movies. Where I understand that they're being treated level-headed, so not as in a oh, it's another found footage movie or oh yeah, it's, found footage is the greatest genre ever. I tend to lean towards your views on them because you are even-handed and you've watched all of them pretty much. So uh, yeah, I see what I was gonna just say that exactly. There's, I don't know mm. much, but I know two things: I know slashers and I know found footage, and th that's my wheelhouse, and that's when I've watched more of. 
and I'm a big proponent of found footage. I'm a defender of it. But I, again, I like you said, I think I'm fair about it for the most part. I mean, mm-hmm. everything's opinion at the end of the day. But, you know, like yeah. I made a list years ago on Exploding Heads. This is the challenge list because people hate found footage so much. Watch <laughs> these movies. Right now, it's up to like 90 now. I really, yeah, yeah. there's 90 movies I would recommend. And this is one of them. This movie. Where does this come in on that list? Just out of curiosity. Well, I don't really have them in order is how... You know, I guess I would have to, but the, basically, any any movie that I score a seven out of ten or higher goes on there. Mm-hmm. Even some that I score below, but other people love, or that I love certain aspects from them. But you know, that's a whole rabbit hole. Uh, but I'll tell you, I give it an eight out of ten. So I, mm-hmm. I it, it's th- it's in my top thirty, I would say, if I'm, you know, because I go one to ten and everything. So yeah, it's mm-hmm. probably up there. But I, I don't think people realize how influential this movie. Uh, was in in 2011 this was the one love it or hate it and i'll tell you right now uh, for the most part i do not like the asylum um found footage movies you know a lot of that's the like the easiest cheapest ones to make and a lot of them are very bad uh but this was the movie that kicked off that whole asylum found footage thing and i know it hasn't aged well and i know some people don't like it but the whole thing with what, what duncan was saying earlier with their mouths opening and all that that effect this was the one that kicked it off. And then mm-hmm. you started seeing it everywhere. So it was influential in that way. And I just really enjoy what they went with. I mean, we got to go one thing at a time. So I'll hold off for now. I just think it's a, <laughs> a pretty damn good film footage movie. Well, let's go one thing at a time then. Story, what did you give it? Story, I give an eight. I think it's really easy to follow. It's quite good. And I'm a big fan of... Of when in movies they do the not time travel, but I, I guess in a way time travel. But it, when you're put in a situation like they did in the Blair Witch movies and in here, where all of a sudden you know time stands still or whatever, you're in a different realm. That stuff always just like I don't know, it just works on me. I think it, it's a cool aspect of filmmaking. So you throw that in, and I think eight's fair. Yeah, so you are, if we were doing averages amongst the three scores, you're right bang in the middle. So, um, oh. so that's a 0.5 lower than what Dan would give it, but a whole point above what Mark would give it. Acting? Acting, I actually give an 8. I don't mm-hmm. see any weaknesses. And I noticed this, because again, I watch a lot of found footage movies, and it has to be believable. If you look like you're acting, then it doesn't work in a found footage movie. It's good found footage movies, you have to feel like, they are people next door, yeah. and the conversations are casual. And that's what's one of the things that make them work. And it worked here. And not only that, not only were these people good at just delivering their regular lines, they were good at, and this is an art form, they were good at trying to do bad acting. Mm-hmm. But when they were on the screen, you could tell, obviously, that they're intentionally trying to make themselves look like bad actors. But in reality, they're not. That's not easy to do. I mean, even that mm-hmm. guy, the, the, the clip you play, that's not <laughs> done because, you know, it's Joe Blow on the street that freaking can't do He was encouraged to try to make it sound like it's un, not believable yeah. and he's being paid for. And that's, that's not always the easiest thing to do. So I'll give it credit for that as well. And when they're scared, it's believable. So that's what you want. Very nice. So that is a 1.5 above what Dan gave it and 2 above what Mark gave it. Um, Effects? Well, again, I know that people are going to say that they're dated and everything else, but uh, for the time, they were really cool. And even movies like um, those hands that were coming out of the wall or the ceiling, they ended up doing that in VHS a few years later. And um, maybe a little better in VHS because they were clearer, but... I, I just think it's a cool effect. I don't mind when things that are ghostly look a little bit off. As long as it doesn't mm-hmm. look cartoony, I'm okay. Because I always say we don't know what that stuff's going to look like in real life if something was to happen. So maybe I'm a little more forgiving, but that's where I'm at. Yeah, you give that a seven. So that's one above what Dan gave it and <laughs> five above what Mark gave it. Um, sorry, Mark. Uh, soundtrack, what did you give it? Or, or sound design slash sound yeah, design? I give it a six. And, and there are some noises. There is a little bit of soundtrack in here, too. There are a little... There are some things occasionally that do go on. And then you have to concern yourself with the beginning when they're masquerading themselves as the show that they're doing. 
there's music there and there's you know that stuff looks it looks believable and again if you're gonna have a good found footage movie one of the best things about it is to have it look like it could be passed off as you know this is real and i think all mm -hmm. that was 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 fine the scary stuff was scary and it worked very nice so at six that's like bang on what dan gave it to above what mark gave it and lastly kills well kills i could only go so high i but I give it a five. I do like the one that you mentioned, uh, Duncan, with the bathtub of blood and him being pulled yeah. in. And actually, I the other stuff is fine. Whether it's on camera or off, they always kind of wrap it up the right way that I'm satisfied with. But there's one kill in particular. And anytime this happens in movies, and not only that, not, not when it happens, the way it's shot. When that kid throws himself down the elevator and you yeah. follow it with him and all that, I thought that was a really well-done kill. And like I said, the, the what's behind that, the thought of saying, I'm going to have to do this. That, that, mm -hmm. that, I don't know, that, that's an emotional kill. So I might even feel like I should give this a six, but I gave it a five. Give it a five, which means, Dave, out of a total possible 50, you give this movie a 34. Um, let's swing it to our last talking head before we swing to our final movie. Cole, um, you'd seen this before, yes? No, for, first time watch. Oh, I can very hell, familiar man. with it. So what what I'll say is is I'm a huge found footage fan, but I would say my least favorite subgenre would be like the supernatural ghost stories. Right. I, I remember when I was younger, my uncle was all into you know like ghost hunters and and you know all those bullshit television programs on like A and E and like Women Entertainment Network. I just couldn't get into it. Right. But I will say that some of the scariest movies are the supernatural and i've said this before on my podcast and everything and it's because it's it's one of the genres that is, is truly scary and you have no control over you, you know i mean slashers don't really scare me if someone wants to come in my house like you know good luck kind of thing but the whole supernatural really terrifies me so i was after watching this i was kicking myself in the ass like god why did i wait so long like 13 years or whatever it is to watch this and then when I found out that it was directed by the Colin Minahan and Stuart Ortiz, I, I love their previous works. They did It Stains the Sands Red, which is phenomenal, yeah. um, and Spiral. Like, I'm, I'm a huge proponent of Spiral. I try to tell everybody to check that out, and I'm not talking the, 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 the Saw Spiral. Um, <laughs> So if you haven't seen that come one, back, check it come out. Come back, listeners. Don't leave. Um, so if you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> no. rocks. Uh, I, I thought it was a great setup with each location. I mean, if we're basing this off of like character writing, I loved it. I absolutely loved the character writing, although they fit stereotypes. I thought it was perfect. The static shots in films like this really get me, and it's because and, – and, and, and to go on the same – uh, like with score, when you don't have a film with score, yeah. sometimes score can draw your attention away. And when you don't have score and you have these static shots, it like draws you in and mm -hmm. you're, you're focusing on something. And even though your brain's telling you, Hey, this is setting you up for a scare. I thought this was very effective and it actually scared me. It takes a lot for a movie to kind of make me jump a little bit. And I thought this Exorcist was very, three. Yeah. Like that whole, the, the infamous scene in Exorcist three, the yep. score doesn't come in until the chop. Yep. Um, yeah. Like what you're watching is basically a static image and people interacting, but you stare at it long enough that you are anticipating something bad's going to happen because there's no musical cue. You don't know when it's going to happen, which yes. is why that scare works. So, yep. Yeah. And, and to kind of expand on what Dan was saying, as far as, you know, some of the negatives with the character development on this, I thought that they did just enough where you kind of loved Lance and when you get that Lance and Houston, the dichotomy between them and then the off camera and on camera, I was like, this is absolute gold. Like he is just schlocking it up and you're like, this is, I mean, I, I really loved it. Lastly, the whole idea of them towards the end of the film when, you know, they're, they're sleeping and they're waking up. Like it terrifies me to think of being in that situation and waking up and you're like, it wasn't a dream. Like we're fucked. Mm kind of thing so the only thing i wish is that, is that you know nobody I, I guess maybe it's just me but i i thought that they could have wrapped it up a little bit better and like my brain i was expecting the caretaker to come back and be like 
hey, it's 6 a.m. And it was all, you know, so I, I thought that they could have wrapped it up a little bit better. I was hoping for a better ending, but overall. Part two, buddy. Part two. Part two. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Part okay. two. Not going to say any more, but there's a part two. So okay. I'll check it out. Might change so. your view on the end and when you watch okay. part two. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll check it out. So. Cool. Right. Well, let's let's do your scores then. Um, story. What did you uh, it's seven out of ten. Um, you know, I, I kind of again, you, you're kind of pigeonholed into found footage. I feel like there's only a few certain scenarios that are going to happen, and even though the haunted asylum is kind of overdone, I really enjoyed it, and and I kind of yeah, it, it worked pretty well overall. Yeah, I mean, once again, you're not far off the mark here. It's a one point five lower than Dan, but. Same as what Mark gave it, slightly below what Dave gave it. Um, acting? I, eight out of ten. I, I thought each character was well written, and I thought that it acted very well with the character itself. So I, I was fairly impressed, and, and especially hearing that the budget was so low. You are in line with, once again, in line with what Dave said um, and marginally above what Dan put and what Mark put. Um, let's talk effects. I gave effects an eight and a half and partly because a lot of it, it was, it, it worked in the context of the found footage style with, you know, the night vision and the lights and all that. So I, it kind of surprised me. I, I Thought it was done pretty well. I was, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty happy with my eight and a half score with that. Yeah, notwithstanding Mark's ridiculously low score there, um, you're in or around what what the the consensus is for it. Uh, soundtrack, uh, seven out of ten. Obviously, I watched this right after we were talking about the whole sound sound design thing. So, yeah, yeah. The sound design worked well in those aspects of it. It made you jump when you were supposed to jump and. So I thought it was done pretty well. Nice, nice. Once again, not that far off the mark of the consensus. And then last, the kills. Seven and a half out of ten. Bathtub scene, loved it. Uh, mm. You know, Houston wandering those those black halls <laughs> was <laughs> nightmare fuel. And just, you know, you knew something was going to happen to him. And I didn't expect him to get kind of, you know, lifted and strangled a little bit there. So I, I was like, yeah, that's that's pretty sweet. Nice. Um, it's the highest score actually given for for that particular category on this movie, uh, seven and a half, which means that of a total of fifty points, you gave this movie thirty eight. So counting down from top scores down to the bottom one, uh, highest score was yourself, Cole, at thirty eight for the movie. Second highest was Dave at thirty four. Then it was Dan at thirty one, and at the bottom, Mark with twenty one. Um, I want to thank Dan for his uh, review here. He can now step down from the docket, which means we have one more movie left, and I will give you some details on that before we turn it over to Cole to bring it home. The final movie is Before I Wake, which was written and directed by Mike Flanagan. This is co-written by Jeff Howard. The DP on this one is Michael... <laughs> you have an awkward Italian surname that I can't pronounce, so let's not do that. <laughs> He's, he's done a ton of stuff, but he's almost, from the moment he jumped into work on Oculus with Mike Flanagan, he's pretty much done everything with Mike Flanagan since as DP. Score! We have the Newton brothers, who once again have a huge amount of work with Flanagan, but Danny Elfman lended his hand into this one. I don't need to tell people who Danny Elfman is or how many scores he's done. That list goes on and on and on. Um, Cast-wise, we have Kate Bosworth, Thomas Jane, or like, I will get into this one, but every time I watch this, I, for some reason, look at him and think Christopher Lambert. I don't know what adds the haircut. It's a horrible wig. It's a horrible wig. <laughs> Thomas Jane. Uh, we have Jacob Tremblay, um, Annabeth Gish, uh, Toffer Basque, maybe, uh, Jay Carnes, Antonio Evan Romero, Kyla Deaver, Hunter Wenzel, and Scooty Thompson. Which, that's a fun name to say. Uh, the synopsis for this one is, A couple adopt an orphan child whose dreams and nightmares manifest physically as he sleeps. 
some of the trivia here for this movie, director Mike Flanagan has repeatedly objected to the film being marketed as a quote-unquote horror movie and instead referred to it as a quote-unquote fable or a quote-unquote supernatural drama. The movie was slated for wide release on September 25th, 2016 until Relative Media, the film's domestic distributor, filed for bankruptcy, leaving the fate of the film unknown. It was later acquired and released by Netflix. One of the three movies directed by Mike Flanagan to be released in 2016, the others being Hush and Ouija, Origins of Evil, which just makes me once again like sit back and remark at how fucking great a director he is because one of those is a sequel which is infinitely better than the original. One of them is one of the more original slasher movies I can see and I can think of in a while. And then this movie in itself, which just shows the versatility of the director. And then lastly, the movie was originally titled as Somina, which would have made it the third film by Mike Flanagan, uh, featuring a Latin single word for the title after Absentia and Oculus. So now that we've got all that blurb out of the way, um, the podcast under the stairs would like to call to the docket, uh, call to either represent supporting or condemning the movie. Cole, the floor is yours. <coughs> um, <laughs> <I've honored> the, <laughs> uh, the, the, the prosecution requests a brief stay to get our notes together here. <coughs> um, uh, just kidding. Um, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the court, I stand here before you today to tell you that before I wake is mid as fuck as the kids nowadays uh, would, would tell you. <laughs> You need to get the whole written and directed by Mike Flannelman idea out of your head. Now, as much as we all wished that the gag of Thomas Jane going for the Steven Weber from Wings look worked. <laughs> all it was was just a clever ploy by Mike Flannelman to divert your attention away from the real facts. This was a paint by numbers, generic horror thriller with unearned jump scares. Again, that didn't work. This comes off as a run-of-the-mill parents mourning a dead child film that was butchered by producers after filming with cuts and edits to cater a broad audience, even though this did not even receive a proper theatrical run. Now, I will admit that Mike Flannelman's writing is definitely his strength, and he does a great job wrapping up in the closing moments of the third act with tying up some loose ends, but this still leaves unanswered questions such as would Steven Weber have been the missing piece that would have actually made this a watchable film in closing <laughs> there is reason this is the only film Mike Flannel Man released in 2016 that had issues with release now I ask you to look beyond the name of the writer and the director for mentioned Mike Flannel Man of this film and ask yourself one question do I actually enjoy this film based on its own merits or did I just spend the last 97 minutes being swooned by the magical, beautiful flow of Thomas Jane's mane? The prosecution rests. God damn. Yeah. <laughs> Silence in the court. Silence in the court. Oh. Um, I mean, yes. That, like, that, not that I'm saying I agree with your your point there about that ladies and gentlemen that's how you that's how you throw fucking down um let's uh i mean let's see if the scores reflect that there was a lot of shade being thrown so a whole lot of, so much shade that i don't need to wear sunglasses i put sun cream on right that's how much shade i'm basking in right now uh, let's talk about scott score. you better lube up buddy <laughs> <laughs> i'm ready um i'm not ready i'm never ready um i always clench for some reason you shouldn't clench never clench uh let's do story uh, what did you give it out of 10? Well, let, let me finish my uh, my whiskey here uh, before we really uh, get into this. <laughs> okay. All jokes aside, I did not hate this film. Uh, the only thing I kind of hate is the fact that it looks like Dan's drinking some uh, new Glarus over there, and I'm a little bit jealous. Um, <laughs> but anyways, I... Oh, you son of a bitch. Uh, I gave the story a 5 out of 10. I thought it was average at best. Mm -hmm. I, I try not to let the idea of, I mean, I love Mike Flannel, Flannel. 
I was no, I'm gonna. You try, almost, really you almost went yeah. to the troll name. I know. I, I, I actually kind of do like Mike Flanagan quite a bit, but I the story was pretty generic. I thought. Hmm. Right. So that's five. And um, what did you give the acting? The acting was a seven. I, I do love Thomas Jane. Uh, Bosworth did pretty pretty legit. I know Gish is is in a lot of his stuff, and she did pretty well. So I mean, the acting was was more than serviceable at a seven out of ten. Seven out of ten effects. Three out of ten, probably that generous on that. Heart, buddy. <laughs> breaks my heart. <laughs> I, I mean, wow. I, I the the butterflies floating around the the canker man. I just. I, I don't know, man. It just didn't do it for me. I, I didn't like it. What can I say? You got to be. You got to vote with your heart, buddy. And that's a three. Um, soundtrack. Seven out of ten. Um, mm-hmm. I thought it 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 added to. I mean, it it kicked in in certain spots. You know, when like with the Christmas tree and whatnot, I noticed it in certain aspects of it. So I I I, I enjoyed it in in certain scenes. Very nice. And then lastly, kills. Three out of ten uh very unimaginative generic you know uh, i i guess i should have asked before we went through all four movies if we do spoilers or whatnot but the whole canker man well, this is gay yeah, you, can, you yeah. can spoil whatever you want yeah yeah i i just was yeah i mean absorbing the it, it's it is what it is i wasn't impressed at all. yeah once again it's one of those movies where that's not the right of the movie. Yeah, yep. like he's, he, he did that in these other movies. I probably would have scored it higher if it was off screen, to be honest. Yep. But. Okay, so you said that you felt the movie was right down the middle. Actually, your scores completely reflect that because out of a uh, maximum 50, you give the movie 25, which, okay. if my math is correct, <laughs> is right down the middle. So there we go. Scottish math, um, second math match up. Love it. I mean, that was a harsh review, and some people would say needlessly harsh scoring, which. When you say needlessly harsh scoring, you have to turn to Mark, who is a notoriously needlessly harsh scorer. Um, Mark, you'd seen this movie before? No, I had not. Right, so I imagine you are you like. I don't want to be that guy to interrupt, but this is the only film that I actually have seen (laughs) twice prior to this, actually. Ah, right. So you you were like rolling in. So Mark had never seen this before. So Mark, you are a a notoriously low scorer. We've already got a couple of movies of evidence of that. Um, Sam, I imagine you're sitting right on the couch with Cole high-fiving right now, yeah? Uh, No, I did the opposite of that with this one. Uh, I actually, I like this movie quite a bit. Uh, It's it's, it's got some parts of it that like I don't like. We're not talking. I kind of, not not on this one. (laughs) <laughs> I, I kind of uh, I kind of agree with Flanagan that like I think the the weakest parts of this movie are the horror parts. Like I almost think like if this wasn't if this didn't have a lot of that shit in it, like the not great CGI monster in this, like uh, if if that wasn't in this, I think this would be like quite a bit stronger. The, the, the strength in this is the I think the story and then the acting mm. and like your mileage may vary on that or whatever. But I thought this was. Uh, really sad when it needed to be and like also kind of sweet and tender when it needed to be and like I, I agree Thomas Jane's wig is fucking atrocious but like I, it's he's, so bad who gave him that a really good uh, he plays a dad really good I think like I, I he was kind of one of my favorite parts of this movie like minus the fucking awful wig like he's I, also not, is he not nowadays like the most stoned man on the planet behind Harrison Ford <laughs> Thomas Jane, he, I'm not, I think he, I think he's a crazy writer. I think you will like do, do do a little bit of research. On him and that <laughs> do your, do your like, research. Do a little bit of research. <laughs> that guy is. There's a reason he's not been in any big movies in the last like eight years, and I think yeah. a lot of it's to do with his general sunny outlook on weed. So there you are. That's all I'll say about that. So. Uh, but yeah, my my, yeah. my scores on this I one are over here. <laughs> 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 awesome. You got to get two more of those in. Oh, I will we we got to pay twenty bucks every time we play that to give the guy. <laughs> <laughs> the Sorry, cash. Thomas Jean acting terrible. Wig, Mark, continue. Uh, that, that, that's pretty much it. My my scores for this are uh, probably this <laughs> is what I was maybe a little too generous on on a few of these. I don't know. I love how Phil and you went on this one. Um, right. <laughs> what did you give this story? 
I got a story of nine. I thought it was it was a fun story to kind of unravel. <laughs> As a f- four higher than uh, objection, than, um, objection. <laughs> <laughs> what did you give the acting? I gave the acting a nine. I think everybody's great in this. That's a two above what Cole gave. Uh, what did you give the effects? The effects I gave this is a seven, which is probably a little too high. Like, like I said, like I don't know, like the butterfly stuff is really inconsistent. Some of it looks fucking atrocious, uh, but some of it looks pretty good. Like I, I like kind of what's like what they did with the lighting, like with some of it where it's like you can see the colors of the butterflies on their the actors' faces. I think like uh, look pretty good. Yep, so that is four above what Cole gave it. Uh, what did you give the soundtrack? The soundtrack is, in, I give this an eight. It's it's great. Mm-hmm. It's it's a really solid one. So that is only one above what Cole gave it, and then lastly, Kills. Yeah, kills, I gave this a five, which is frankly way too fucking high. The, the Kills are kind of <laughs> kind of not great. <laughs> like, in fact, I think they might be like the weak point of the, the, this movie. Like, they're they're not terrible. There's just, there's nothing to them. They're like they're kind of they're they're generic. They they feel like Netflix special effects, which is what they were. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they feel it. Well, no, they are. Um, and Flanagan, no. And, and the movie just doesn't just need it either. Them. Like. They, they just feel unnecessary. Yeah. Right, out of a maximum mark, 50 points that you could have given this one, you give this a 38. So yeah, I'm 13 okay with points, that. 13 points higher than what Cole gave it. Um, let's see what Dave made. Anything you want to uh, agree with, disagree with, reiterate? Well, uh, Cole, you're, you're a monster, man. <laughs> <laughs> How do you not the heart of this freaking movie with the dead child and the things that are going on and the battle between the parents like oh my god and the way it ends oh my dude this is an emotional freaking movie and and you 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 call it generic I don't know I I don't get many uh, I don't get emotional at lots of things I watch like maybe less than 10% in this movie mm. It pulls, man. It pulls on the heartstrings for me. But hey, it is what it is. That's the only real strong opinion I, I have. <laughs> I understand some of the other stuff. But dude, um, this is a movie that finds a way to have a dream demon and not ape off Freddy. And then mm-hmm. have such an original idea of somebody dreams and the dreams, whatever they're dreaming of, come to life in the place. And then everything going on with the parents, the push and pull and how you see Thomas Jane um, right off the bat, he's studying butterflies while she is over, you know, he's concerned about trying to learn, you know, everything he can about this, this child they've just adopted, you know, and she is, you know, she's staring at old pics instead. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it, that alone. That scene shows you everything you need to know about moving on and 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 just not, and then taking something and going into something that they would consider borderline abuse. I think there's so much going on here, but I'll stop. <laughs> my, my my favorite thing is my favorite my favorite thing in the whole episode is the point where Dave Z just called Cole a monster. <laughs> yeah. I, like, Our I, first like, time I'm, recording together too. I'm a, I'm a I'll see you in a this. month, buddy. Right on, right on, brother. I, I'm in. <laughs> moving, moving forward, I'll just advocate. I, I'm so happy right now. Um, let's talk about your scoring then, Dave, overall for this one. What did you give the story? Story is a nine. I think it's original. It I think it's sad. I think it, it's clever. There's a lot going on here, and I really appreciated it. There you go. So that's the same as Mark and four above what Cole gave it. What did you give the acting? The acting I give an eight. Uh, Thomas Jane is always has always been one of my favorite actors. Of course, I didn't notice the wig. Something else I never noticed that everybody else always <laughs> notices, like bad acting. I don't notice bad bad wigs ever. And I something else I don't notice everybody else notices. Oh, like when somebody is from a different country and they're putting on an accent, people say, oh, that yeah, guy, yeah. he had a horrible accent. And I never <laughs> knew. I thought he literally, legitimately was from the UK. So, so <laughs> it's, it's sometimes it's good to be me. But, you know, that, that, 
Ignorance is bliss, after all. But uh, yeah, and what's her name was really good. Uh, Kate Bosworth, who I've always been aware of, but not, not sure if I've ever uh, watched any of her movies prior. Straw to Dogs movie. was pretty good too. I want. I saw Straw Dogs once, and that before I knew it was her. So you're right. Yeah, yeah that is a good flick. Uh, but I, the acting was good all around, actually. I mean, the boy, yeah. he, he was great. He was. He, the, was, he the, was really good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, child actors, as far as that goes, he's and on top of it. He, he's an endearing little boy. He pulls the, you know, he's such a sweet boy. He reminds me a little bit of um, Andy Barkley in the first Child's Play. The way oh, he yeah. was in the first, yeah. Yeah, very, his, yeah. His, Good I, I will say his acting was a 10. His facial effects and everything, like, yeah, yeah. he was like the sweetest little boy and, yeah. Yeah, even the kids were good. The bully and the, and the, and the girl yep. that he be friends. So, yeah, acting is an eight. I might have gone yeah. higher, yeah. Yeah, so you are right in between the two scores we've already had. Effects? Effects, I actually give a seven. Mm -hmm. And as far as the CGI goes, um, I think it was done in, uh, it could be a cop out, but I think it was done intentionally mm -hmm. for the context of this film. Because you're dealing with a child dreaming, and a child's dreams are just, the, just dreams. Yeah, colorful, like the, yeah. Right, the butterflies may not be just monarchs. They may be these bright colors and this, and they may look kind of fake because it's a child who you know, dreaming. And I think you're it, actually, yeah, you're right. Because like it, the, the butterflies didn't have antennas until the chick drew them on. And like the yes, face of right, yeah. the mom in the flashback wasn't fully there. And because right. he didn't remember her well. So you're right. You're, I, I mean, I can't argue with you on that. And I think it's clever what they did with the Christmas tree lights, the next life, the next mm -hmm. night, because they were Christmas tree lights on the tree. Yep. When he dreamt, he incorporated two things. He liked the lights. He likes butterflies. So they came out as Christmas lights. I thought it was so smart. Um, so, and, and one, something else about the CGI, when he kills the one guy, you know, I, it's, again, it, it, I thought it was kind of cool to see, even though if that CGI wasn't the greatest. And again, with the canker man, same thing. This is the mind of a child, and this is what they've envisioned. Think about it. They've never even seen the – he's never seen the canker man except even when, when he was so young, not knowing who it was and what was going on. So this is like a repressed memory. All he's ever done is draw it. So I, I can excuse them being a little cartoony in that way just because they're a child's dreams. So that, that I'm okay. I give it a seven. Yep, you are spot on with what Mark has and four above what Cole gave it. Hey, let's talk soundtrack. Soundtrack, I'll give a seven. The thing about Flanagan's movies is they're all kind of like this. It, mm -hmm. They're all good. They're never like extraordinary where I'm talking about, you know, they're in top five or ten, you know, scores for the year or anything like that. But um, they're always very solid. And he, he, like Duncan said earlier, he works with this the same people. And, yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty good. Uh, so you're coming in seven on that one. That is the same as goal and one below mark. Lastly, kills. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, we just we just get the one, uh, and maybe I'm going high on it, but I give it a four, just because I thought it was cool. The the engulfing, the taking. I mean, that's a and it's a scary thing to happen. So, yeah, I dig it. Good flip. Yep. Four. So you are right in the middle um, between what Mark and Cole scored it. Thank you very much, Dave. Um, what well, going remind me again? Midwest kindness was it? Midwest. Oh, Midwest nice. Yep. Midwest. It's I wonder if that's gonna work I, I've never heard of Wisconsin nice, but I've heard of Minnesota nice and Iowa nice. So I I, I wonder if this <laughs> niceness is uh, a communal thing. I, what, we'll see. We'll see. That, I'm looking at Dan's <laughs> scores right now, and. Um, Yikes. Uh, right, Dan, you, you're up, my friend. Um, anything you want to query in on what Cole said, uh, reiterate, probably high five on by the looks of these. <laughs> like, uh, what are you coming in <laughs> on before I wake? Boy, you know, I just got to jump in and the the whole wig thing. In my notes, I put that, that this, this wig is indefensible. <laughs> and I put Thomas Jane in a Tarzan wig is upsetting but also at the same time I'm like why don't we have Thomas Jane as Tarzan why didn't that happen why didn't that happen wow. because it just it was right there and that's uh, unfortunately kept going through my head the entire movie but <laughs> with that wig I didn't realize that he was 
the dead kid's dad for the longest time mm, because wow. in the the photo that they have of the family it's all with clean the dead cut. kid, yep. yeah, he doesn't have the long hair and stuff. And I was like, who the hell is that guy? Like, is there a different it's after dad? What's hair, man? That, that was yep. that was Thomas Jane Battle Los Angeles in that photo. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and then and then his whole like they they had to bring in the well he's an architect as a job, mm. but nobody fucking works in this movie. Nobody's ever at work. At one point, <laughs> he's at a desk and he's like, I'm kind of tired because I'm working, but he's like on a table. No architect. He would be at a drafting table. Why is he just at like the kitchen table? I literally thought that table? same thing. And there is that one scene though where you see uh, Kate Bosworth wearing like a little badge, so she must have been a nurse. I, dude, I, th- I thought the same thing. I was like, do they not work? Are they just loaded or like life insurance on their on Sean or what? Yeah. So with the <laughs> nurse thing, when she was in the hospital later, I was like, oh, did she? Did I miss something where she stole a nurse's uniform? Mm. And got in because it was never established. I don't know. Nah, there's that so, one scene where they, yeah, she shows up in scrubs and the, yeah, that, that's really just to get to the plot point with like the, the, the pills that she gets. Uh, like is the only reason that she's a nurse. Oh man. Yeah. Wow, man. Just totally <laughs> over my head. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, okay. So I also got to say this, like I really, I enjoy Mike Flanagan's work. I really do. But this is just so milk toast. Mm. It's very sad. <laughs> and it's, I get it. Like, not everybody's going to have a hit. We've totally discovered that during this episode that mm-hmm. people who are generally good don't always knock it out of the park. And I feel that this one probably should have just been forgotten somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Dave Z called me a monster. I know. Yeah. Holy cow! <laughs> I, well, well, I never the imagined there were two. Oh my yeah. God. Midwest monsters. <laughs> um, There's a new podcast right there, folks. Hundred percent, hundred percent. And they talk about monsters. That's all they talk about on the show. Yeah. Well, or yeah, movies uh, with monsters in them. So like, well, this is this is where it fully bears out here. Um, <laughs> because I thought Cole scores were low. Um, and then I saw yours. Uh, Dan, right, like, <laughs> give me your scores on the story. Um, I gave the story a seven. Mm-hmm. I thought it was, I thought it was pleasant enough for, um, like a fantasy film about dead kids. But honestly, it was like the mom's toxicness. Like she was so toxic and just abusing this kid to get what she wanted out of him. And Thomas Jane was ultimately killed unceremoniously as the one person who's like what you're doing is wrong so i love horror it could have been a little higher had it been (laughs) (laughs) sometimes nice guys finish last um (laughs) uh, uh, a seven out of ten is actually the average score between all the scores that have come out so you're right in the middle uh acting Acting, I gave a six because I I think these kid actors were just kind of hit and miss for me. <laughs> you mean? And that wig, <laughs> that wig couldn't act its way out of a pile of dead kids, I guess. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> uh, right, that is the lowest score given to the acting. Only by one, one lower than Cole, though, which is the, the most important thing here. FX? I gave it a 4.5, and mm-hmm. I feel... That's being generous, but my main thing is that um, when they had the illustration that the kid made, it was actually mm. done by a child. <laughs> Where normally it's like an adult yeah. doing kid art, but yeah. I was like, wow, look at that. It actually looks like a kid drew it. But the canker man, while he did kind of look like the kid drawing, mm-hmm. was not, it wasn't scary. If that came running at me, I'd just like kick it. I'd be like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> um, so that's you, a, a point five. Sorry, one point five higher than what Cole gave it. Um, this is where things drop off. And uh, what did you give the soundtrack? <laughs> oh, I gave it a three. 
I almost, I almost shit myself when I saw that the Danny Elfman was involved. <laughs> How oh, is, that, is, is it da Danny Elfman's the Trent Reznor? Is that the same? No, Danny, Danny Elfman. Elfman. No, no, no. You're thinking of Danny Loner. Oh, uh, Danny yeah, Elfman's, yeah, yeah. Okay. Danny Elfman's the Tim Burton dude. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yep. Un un Uncle Bongo, um, like pretty much any horror movie you watch throughout the 80s, yep. most of the way through the 90s, is Danny Elfman. So, um, so yeah. Uh, <laughs> you should just um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, so, uh, anything like that in a score, and you're like, Danny Elfman's in <laughs> <laughs> it's not like he's like, that's an Elfman score if never heard one. <laughs> it's like every single time. Um, you give this a three, so that's like yeah, considerable lower than anyone else. But I'm sure that your scores didn't go lower still when we come to talk about kills. What did you give the kills, Dan? I gave it a two. <laughs> um, just because somebody died, I guess. But also. <laughs> Still, like Thomas Jane's character didn't deserve to die. Like for that, I thought, he did. I, I thought there I was gonna have, be. I had them earlier. <laughs> I was kind of hoping that this movie was gonna like shit the bed and be like everybody comes back and it's happy at mm. the end. But oh. nope, he's just gone. Oh. And the mom's like, "Well, hey, kid, uh, I guess we're just gonna keep moving on." Yeah, it felt really <laughs> weird. <laughs> It was like, you're the worst person in this entire movie. Life finds a way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, overall, out of 50, you give this movie a 22 and a half out of 50. Which means if I look at high scores to low scores, the high score given to this, mark, uh, to this movie is by Mean Mark, who gave it 38 out of 50, followed by <laughs> Dave Z, who gave it 5 out of 50. Then Cole, who gave it 25 out of 50. And then lastly, um, yourself, Dan, who gave it 22 and a half out of 50. Um, Dan, thank you very much uh, for, for, um, for, for for speaking in on this one. Cole, you are now excused from the doc, which means we can now get to the most important part of the show, um, which is not listening to you guys, but now listening to solely me. Um, as I, uh, I <laughs> accrue all the points in together and uh, give you the information that everyone is very excited to see. I can let you know, ladies and gents, that uh, my scores are not required to define any of the slots one through four in this one. So you'll all be happy about that one. You'll be getting my scores shortly. But I can tell you right now that scoring out of a possible 200... Um, the score of 152 making it number one on the, the, the docket is the Devils it, it, it made it to the top place 152 <laughs> out of 200 so there you go uh, in second place and this shocked me uh, I am not unhappy about it but it did shock me in second place with 124 points out of a possible 200 Grave Encounters came in at number two in third place um, only 3.5 below uh, <laughs> Grave Encounters, very close, uh, was Before I Wake, um, which came in at third place, so it's 120.5 out of 200. And in the fourth place, well, you already guessed it, um, My Soul to Take, which got 92.5 points out of 200. So that's the, the listing there. It's The Devils in first place, Grave Encounters second, Before I Wake in third, and My Soul to Take in fourth. Um let me give you my scores. So I'm weirdly not that far off the consensus here. Actually, if I look at my scores going down, I um, scored the highest points to the Devils. Second highest points were to Before I Wake. Um, then Grave Encounters, which was marginally below, and My Soul to Take was at the bottom. Uh, to, to work in the order of the movies that came out, I gave My Soul to Take 27 points collectively overall, which would mark me the same points as Dave, um, which is marginally below Cole. So I would have come in probably about the middle mark for that one. Uh, the Devils, I scored at 40 out of a possible 50, which means I would have been the same as Cole. I would have given it exactly the same. Um, marginally lower than Mark's 44, um, but above uh, both Dave and Dan's. So I gave that 40. Uh, Grave Encounters, I gave 33, which on paper I would have thought I would have scored higher because I genuinely love Grave Encounters. I think it's a fucking great movie. But when I came to critically 
like work out kills was where it actually dropped more points than I was expecting and um, the sound design as well so with 33 points I come in as uh, the third low score or middle overall and then lastly before I wake I give it 35 I really like I'm kind of with Dave on this one I'm not a guy that generally gets emotionally invested with um, movies but the idea of having the ability through maybe slightly manipulating another child by making them sleep to interact with a dead child. Um, I weirdly find myself getting on board with quite a lot of what's in that movie very easy in a way which makes me uncomfortable. Um, I like it. I think it's, I, I have always erred towards the side of kind of um, that kind of feeble kind of horror drama sort of stuff, Guillermo del Toro's work and whatnot. So uh, it doesn't surprise me coming at 35 for that one, which actually looking across here is the same score as Dave again and slightly below Mark. So it would have put me near the top on that one. Um, if we actually add my scores in, believe it or not, Nothing fucking changes. Um, the Devils <laughs> remains at the top uh, with 182 points out of 250. Grave Encounters is still... Is that the same distance between? It is indeed. There's still three and a half points in between Grave Encounters and Before I Wake. So Grave Encounters comes in at 157 out of 250. Um, Before I Wake is 155 and a half out of 250 in third place. And My Soul to Take um, is 119.5 out of two. 150. So yeah, my, my scores had no impact at all, which means that you guys did everything right. So congratulations for being just all around generally awesome. All that's left for me to say is thank you very much to my guests who have joined this show to do this episode. I've been spoiled on this recording for sure. I would say they all told you what shows they do right at the start of this episode. Please go away and support them. It's very important that you do that. And rather than just cling to one voice, cling to many. And if any of the reviews on these movies align with your thoughts on said movies, that's more a reason to go out and check out what those guys are doing on their podcasts. We have one more episode of this still to come. Uh, both Cole and Dan will be on that episode, returning for episode number five. Um, it'll be interesting to see how close the scores are again between those two guys. Maybe this uh, Midwest thing is a real thing yep. and not just something that in my head sounds like Hobbit language. I don't know. I just like, <laughs> oh, we're in the Midwest. I don't know, that means nothing here. Um, in Scotland, the Midwest is probably a 20 minute drive from the south or the north. That's how small my country is. Um, but yeah, I, I thank you very much to my hosts and thank you very much for checking out this episode. We'll be back for the finale of this series next week. But until then, wherever you are, whatever the time zone is and whatever you're up to in this big bad world of ours, please take care of yourselves out there. This is Duncan Cleese broadcasting live from under the stairs and I am signing off. <laughs>